Jordan Beats. What's happening, Athletes and Cannabis family? It's your boy, Joe Moore Jr. I am your host. This is our first Athletes and Cannabis conversation uh, that we're going to have, hopefully of many. Um, our first one is with TJ Cottrell, uh, also known as AKA Cottrezy. Uh, make sure you follow him on Instagram, uh, at Cottrezy. Um, he is an American football player, uh, formerly with the Minnesota Vikings uh, in the National Football League. He was an undrafted free agent uh, in 2004. He played his college football at Buffalo State College. Uh, Cottrell Alt was also a member of the Rain Fire, the Frankfurt Galaxy, the San Diego Chargers, and the Rochester Raiders, uh, and also the New York Sentinels. Uh, he is the son of a former NFL linebacker, Ted Cottrell, and all of his ties to the NFL. Um, he also uh, played on the same team as his father coached. Um, and so uh, we jumped pretty much right into the conversation. So that's why I'm doing this, uh, just to brief you guys on who he is. Uh, we kind of jumped right into the conversation of how he got to the NFL, uh, his journey through college, his journey being a ball boy um, uh, on his dad's team. I think, I believe his uncle was also uh, in the NFL as well. Um, so he has tons of NFL and professional experience. Uh, and he's also transitioned over into the cannabis space. Uh, so we talked about uh, being an athlete and transitioning into the cannabis space and how cannabis has helped him uh, elongate his playing career um, and just his health and wellness, um, mental health, physical health and well-being. Uh, we also talked about his creative side and what he's doing in, in, in his artistry. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this content. Uh, please be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms on Twitter. Uh, we are at athlete in cannabis uh, in Insta on Instagram. We are at athletes in cannabis. Uh, you can also check us out on our website and you can purchase some merchandise uh, to support our cause. Um, and the, our website is www.athletesandcannabis.com. Uh, be sure to follow us on all of our platforms, comment, uh, share your thoughts, share uh, athletes that you want us to interview and have on our show. Uh, and please, uh, if this is on YouTube, uh, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up and comment. Uh, so with no further ado, here is TJ Cottrell. And I appreciate you again. I, I've, been, I've been following for a good, uh, probably a good three or four months. Okay. Because I was like, you know what I mean? And uh, I really enjoy the content, especially uh, what you're doing. So it's educational. Keep it going. Keep it going, man, for real. And especially with uh, the transition on these things. Uh, you know, it's a mutual find, man. I found yeah. you for real, for real. We need, right. we need more uh, programs like this, you know what I'm saying, right. to get it out. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what my whole idea was, you know. Uh, you know, I played D1 ball, tried out for the league. But okay. I grew up in Maryland, Prince George's County, you know. Mm -hmm. I was one of the wealthiest black neighborhoods and communities in the country, um, yeah. and I was private school. And so you see all this wealth, but one one thing I realized is we're not getting the stories. We're right, not getting right. Paper. Yeah. Uh, like everything isn't just money, right? Mm -hmm. like a lot of mm -hmm. stuff is just those little gems or having somebody that is a connect, you know, yes. a corporation Absolutely. or somebody owns. You know, but that's the information that we're not receiving from our mouths to our next Absolutely. generation. And we haven't received it from the generations above us. So mm -hmm. my idea behind the whole athletes and cannabis for me to start off was, all right, cannabis is le being legalized. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, me being an intellectual person, essentially <laughs> like, but all right, we live in the tech age. So mm -hmm. what did I do? I go buy the domain name. Right, mm -hmm. athletesandcannabis.com, mm -hmm. and Smart. I can sit, I can sit on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like, I'm, just, yeah. I'm building in that way because it's like it's digital real estate. Absolutely. I can keep it for three, four, five years, ten mm -hmm. years, however long, and it's a lot harder to kind of build a house and maintain a house. Right, where I could build a website and mm -hmm. then start to build and curate a community that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Where now we're getting content, emails, stories, 
And then that way, you know, five, 10 years from now, you know, we've built this ecosystem that, right. You know, all right, we want to, you know, but the tech is where it's at. It's this mm-hmm. computer, mm-hmm. it's this mm-hmm. conversation, yeah. like these conversations turn into books, turn into Absolutely. TED Talks. Um, yeah. But, you know, we are the athletes. We are the ones mm-hmm. that are training at the highest level, performing at the highest level, right, using right, cannabis, right. but being dead yeah. for using it, you know. And, Absolutely living three, four, five lives because we kind of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and the thing about it too, the knowledge is there also. Because I mean, yeah. when, again, again, you know, early 2000s, I mean, it was like, it wasn't for medication. Like nobody knew about CBD creams. And right. Shit like that. You're, right. You know how it goes. Like you're yeah. smoking after work to calm down yeah. or after <laughs> practice to calm down. He didn't care. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right. And now I think that you're 100% right. You're in the beginning of a point where this is going to give another year or two, especially because of the federal situation right. dropping. Right. Well, on hemp, you got hemp. You got to hemp up the, yeah. I mean, hemp is like a now a dietary supplement, right? So, like, you can go to the grocery store and get like a hemp pizza nowadays, right? So, right. Um, and that that is taken off as well, mm-hmm. also. And I mean, I even tested out, um, the hemp when I remember I was playing uh like just last year I was in Montreal and they had this flag football league called FPF and it's actually legit. Like you would appreciate it being an athlete because it was a um We need more flag like, football. Yes. That's what I and, think. You know, yeah, the game is need a lot. I'm a safety, so I like the hit. Yeah. But you would have loved you would have loved this one because people like they had um about thirty divisions. And they put you in with a player rating. Okay. And then they also rate you as a player like on some like video game stuff like create a player they had your stati- they had statistics of everything from catches to tackles all right they had an all-star game they had like this is it was one of the biggest ones in north america okay. like montreal was known for that like little gyms like that well, anyway i remember playing it and, and i remember like observing it for like six months and i was like yo i'm gonna, I'm gonna go work out i'm gonna get right for right. this league you know because we all we both know too that's also about preventing injury too for like, sure. like simple stuff like people always like oh i don't know i don't know why i'm sort of like bro you probably ain't worked out for this and your body's not used to these movements and all these things so you got to get working so <clears throat> i remember I, I was gonna sign up i gave my good, uh, myself a good six to eight months of training right. and i was excited because now i'm fully into that cannabis mode right i'm fully into it right and so i uh sat there and one of my games i ended up getting myself some charlotte's web Okay. Uh, and it was like you know I think you know it's it's like basically no mostly CBD actually mm-hmm. and it's actually hemp it's actually looked up as a dietary supplement okay and so when it did when I did that um, I remember taking it before a game about an hour before and now because I had smoked I'm like you know I'm gonna try this and it was amazing what how it balanced and made me how I had the perfect energy and the focus and it didn't feel like I smoked at all right. So it, it was a proof in the pudding, like, yeah, see, now even cannabis can be consumed even before you really do, you know, some athletic stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, Well, and that's the whole thing, too. You know, we, we demonize it and it's like, well, CBD and, you know, how that's used and learning about the endocannabinoid system and learning that yes. everybody has that, right? Yes, so we already yes. have that in our body. So now we are able to you think like we haven't been able to educate ourselves at all. And then you mm-hmm. have doctors prescribing medicines, but doctor, we don't even know that doctors don't know anything. Exactly. Right? The exactly. doctors got their own little Google that they go to to perform yeah. different things. Um, and so my degree, I got a degree in healthcare. Uh, okay. I think that's what really separated me, especially as a college athlete, was you know, you know um, and I think this is why we need to have these conversations too, is because a lot of times, yeah, we get these scholarships, uh, but kids are going to college and getting a degree in something that's not going to matriculate to anything. Uh, right. into, uh, and that goes into a depression because if you go get a degree in sports rec management, mm-hmm. but you live in a city that doesn't have recs around or community development or you know, a place to actually work and hire you, Right, you're not gonna have a good job, and now you have a degree. Your body's deteriorating. You were a celebrity in college. Now you just Absolutely. a hometown hero. You got, yeah. got out of the league, didn't make whatever. 
But yeah. now you got to be a normal person, and nobody has taught you those soft skills, you know, those tangibles that you have. Um, but these are the things that we have to, you know, kind of do on our own, I realize, because mm-hmm. it's like it's not going to ha- the system isn't built, you know, to connect with us in a certain way. You, yeah, man, you, you preach it right now. <laughs> you preach it right now because I, we, we, I went through the same exact thing. Right. Um, the skills that we learned, one, especially because, you know, I'm an 80s baby. Right. So we, we came up on that time when. One technology. I then, baby, 89. 89. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm not a 90, like, baby. I'm an 89. Yeah, 89. You just get you the last of the Mohicans, man. 80s babies are the last real ones because we grew up with that not that no technology and we had to go right. get it. And, and I remember reading specific books and not and knowing the from sources. upstate. So we got to talk about upstate. Yeah, we'll talk about upstate. Yeah, wow. we're going to talk about upstate. People don't know, man. Upstate is real. We're gonna talk about I mean, that. I mean, just just snow, the snow in mm-hmm. general. Right? Like people don't know. We, you grew up tough, man. Snow was nothing to us. I, I mean, I literally was working out, you know, shoveling snow. Yeah, that's how I got down. You know, driveway. Right. My driveway was pretty big, man. Right. Come on, get out, get out there. You know what time it is. You know what I mean? Well, you, you had. Know, I mean, it. you had a legit family too, and you came. Yeah. From, that's, that's pretty impressive too. Your, uh, your family background. So I'm gonna love. I it. did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be able to be born into the Cottrell family where, you know, again, my uncle was, um, he's um, Bill Cottrell Mm -hmm. and to be the first center, black center of the Detroit Lions. And um, they both came from Delaware Valley College, actually. It was actually D3. Wow. So they came from D3. And this is a time back then, I think they had like 13 rounds in the, in the draft. Right. So, but, so he still got drafted. Like, I think one of these like eighth or ninth round. Um, right. They both came. They both were because they're brothers. They both came out. He came out a year before my dad did. So he went to Detroit, and he ended up a great career there. And he ended up working for Ford Detroit, right. which so he showed how you can go from the football, you know, transition yeah, to the corporate. Yeah, and he ended up being. But the thing is, he had that like Ford. Yeah. And he, you know, you don't have Ford everywhere. You don't have Detroit. Ford, like, yeah, exactly. And, and he was in so, Detroit. And he was in Detroit. Right? Where there's a lot so of black a, people, a lot of yeah, black Yeah, a lot power. of black people. Absolutely. So he was in the Mecca of it. And so he he able to finish his retirement being one of the high ranking people in the uh, in Ford. Actually, a, a fact was out here in Canada, it's a place called Oakville, which is south of Toronto. And they have a huge, probably a $30, $40 million Ford factory. Like, this is provides jobs. as well. He... I remember him telling me that he was up here and signed. Last time he was here, he signed the papers to allow them oh, wow. to, to have. A, so it was like a pillar yeah. like that, right? Yeah. And then had my said my father, you know, he played linebacker. Uh, he gets drafted again to Delaware, and he played um, the first black linebacker uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. He also played for like Winnipeg, Winnipeg Blue Bombers and uh, right. played a little CFL too, right? Um, right? And then his transition was into coaching. He went to Rutgers University. Um, that was his first like D coordinator job, and then went to Kansas City. Got his first pro job, and in, in with Mark Levy. I was actually born there, but I was only there for like maybe three months until he took the entire staff to Buffalo, New York. Okay. So, and then basically, like you know, there's a couple years in there where like uh, even before I went to Kansas City, I think I spent one couple years in New Jersey for the coach for the Jersey General. So it's kind of like I was a military baby for the first sure. couple. Of, you, you know, years, That's but then the about being in the, in the yeah. industry of moving around, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. So then, like, I'm, when I got to Buffalo, it was like, I, that was when I heard my first memory. But then, yeah, uh, thank the heaven and above. Like, he wasn't one of those ones I was hopping around. If my dad would have had me when he was younger, right? I think that I would have been because, like, there's people don't understand that you in the pro industry, like, yeah, you can just be, you, you could be even good. You can be like have a set contract, and be right. like, yo, bro, I think we're going to be here for ten years. And they say, ah, no, we're going to trade you in two years. Right. So for now sure. you have kids, family, schools, right. and all that. I remember, Friends. you know, having that situation, and then and then we ended up going to Arizona for five years and went back to Buffalo. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So I got kind of I got a West Coast vibe as I was a child. Then I came back to the to the home turf, which is Buffalo. And I never realized when I when I got back, I'm like, yeah, this is actually me. This is where I'm from. Like right. I, I remember, like this is that this, energy this is that, that, that yeah. East Coast. Yeah, that's me. You know, Arizona was cool, but like, yeah, you know, I picked up what I needed to and got that out of there. <laughs> um, and that's what you realize though in these different regions and coasts, man. It really yes. is 
it's different yes. and you gotta mm-hmm. know the kind of where you feel that connection absolutely you know? absolutely and um so being that and then having him there and then growing up around sports all the time that's what it was i mean from the very get-go i remember one of my favorite toys was like the you know those little basketball hoops that are plastic right and playing that's all i needed down the basement i was getting tall right in six five so i was getting tall so i'm down there you know playing and everything i remember my dad beat me and i was like probably like six years old and i was so angry at him how it was tall, the first time. How it tall was, are you, bro? I'm six five, six, six five. Because yeah, the pictures but, don't do you no justice, but I see <laughs> you, you're a tight end. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing about it. It's funny. People are like, you know, you get to a certain level. You know about this, man. And playing D one, you know, man. Be, be big boys out there, man. Huge. Big, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Like, when I yeah. first walked on campus, I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what happened to me Dude, when I was grown men too. Like, yeah, you know, it was 23, 24, 25 kids. Look, man, <laughs> I've been I, to jail I, maybe. I had some confidence issues at one point in my size, right? Because I didn't really get. I was six five and lean when I was like a senior in high school, so I got recruited by like D three schools. But then there's a couple D one schools that were like, "Hey, man, they kept my eye on me because I had real good stats. Yeah. I, had, I had like fourteen sacks." I, had, I was playing tight end at, at uh, high schools. So I had sixteen where's, touchdowns where's tight end. This place called Williamsville South High School, which is outside of Buffalo. Okay. And that, yeah, upstate. You know what I'm saying? Right outside of Buffalo. It's right. not far. We here's the thing. I'm gonna shout out to you because you because your fan from Rochester. They got great football out there too. Like and my dad can, was a beast. Yeah, I, I Rochester got stuff, good. But he was he was like a city all-star and all that. Mm. Yeah, shout out. I mean, he it's serious. I hope you see this. It's Rochester, so I do. It's serious football. But below, we we were like neck and neck, but Rochester was that. It was actually, but even upstate, Rochester, Syracuse, you don't get that serious football going on right. upstate, man. Yeah. And so being going up in there, at that time, Buffalo was really weird because Buffalo wasn't, UB, University of Buffalo, D1, was not recruiting local talent. They were trying to get all That's these cats from the South. Is. That's how Maryland Yeah. Is. So they were getting cats from the South. Mm-hmm. Well, Buff State College, where I ended up going, which was D3, was getting all the local talent. And we was all crew because we all went to high school together and played right. against each other. So you were getting an all-star group of upstate, too. Right. Some Rochester Cats, some downstate city cats. Right. So we was busting ass. Like, in the 90s, we were killing cats. Right. Like, people, the, one of the top D3 schools, besides, like, Mount Union and these cats, and the, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, we was, and we would play. It's a funny thing about it. People don't get it. We were independent. So our first game, we playing D1AA scholarship teams right. and busting their ass. Busting their ass. Our yeah. game would be on ESPN. The score would be on ESPN. Right. So, like, remember my sophomore year, I scored a win touchdown. They, they, it was a game they highlighted at D3 school. Like, D3 right. school. But they didn't understand that, yo, we were Players busting ass. at because, every level. Mm-hmm. But it's also, if you playing that fun and that fluid – which exactly, friends. yeah. So all you it, need it is was, a few dogs, right? And we and we had dogs too. We were all we were real like we were gang. It was like you know I'm gonna tell you we had um, four four years. It was like we was gang. It was it was right. like that because it's all races, all creeds, mm-hmm. all people coming. You know how football is. It right. brings us together. Um, and so going to that school, and um, then I got my size, and you ended up. So then I remember. When did when your size come? So, like, it was like I was – so – because I knew my dad's a bigger guy. So, I knew it's when I got my senior year now, I started really working out, too, obviously, when I got to college. So, I literally gained – I was when I got to college, I was, like, 210 pounds. By the end of my college career, I was about 250. So, I gained about 20, 10 pounds, 15 pounds of muscle every year properly. But then the funny thing about it was – the head coaches of UB, they were they were they weren't successful. I remember going to their UB camp and balling out, and right. a couple of coaches seen me. They were like they had their eye on me, but they knew how they got down. Well, he got fired my sophomore year, and then like my junior year when I started really going out, like we would connect with them. They had like a convention because I was captain, so I had to go talking, and it was like a, it was like a Buffalo sports uh, convention, and UB coaches were there, Buff State, everybody was there. Right. And the, co- the new coach was like, yo, what are you, are you from around here? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I went to school up up the street from your school. Right. And he was like, because he was seeing my size and my speed, he was just like, and I ended up being one of those guys that definitely should have went to D1. 
And, sure. and that's what we were talking about when you said earlier about how big the size is. Mm-hmm. The reason why I kind of also got deterred was my dad brought me to Rutgers mm-hmm. one day, right? And I just never had seen anything that big. That right. university was already big. And then when I right. got to the locker room, and I'm like, yo, and I'm I'm 200 pounds, 6'5", right. and these cats, I'm like, I got a basketball body, right? These right. cats, like, you know how it is. These cats is like two, not 340. Mm-hmm. That's, they run as fast as hell. That's just an outside... 270 pound outside linebacker. You're like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this shit? Mm-hmm. But I didn't know right. that I was gonna get. To so, and yeah, so then my junior year, I was like, y'all should just walk on. Because mm-hmm. I had Virginia, I had like a couple of schools, like Youngstown State was, was on there. University of Virginia was on it. They, mm-hmm. they coached somehow, they went, somehow, some way, they coached one of the defensive coaches came to our high school just and just was doing like a coaching clinic and he saw me. So I started getting, he started sending me shit, but I was scared. But I should. He's like, you should just walk on, bro, because you had right. that one year to train. Then you're gonna be a beast, right? And and, and I always think like, uh huh. And and again, cannabis was not part of my situation at this time. Right. Cannabis yeah, was not part of it. Looking at like sixteen. See, that's the thing. Being in the NFL, shit, weed was nothing. We so I was trained like you don't like no drug test. They drug, you know what I'm saying? So I was away from me like. So then, you know, even when I was touching it in any way, like something you know, or whatever, I do have to sell it to survive, whatever, whatever. It was always, I never, I never touched it. I never had a good it. Puff. Right. Like I would be around cats, it would stink. You know what I mean? I'd be one of those guys like, yo, so we'll smoke that shit outside. Right. Like I was that dude. That dude, yeah. Get that away from Ew, you. right? <laughs> I look back at it, I'm like, but I also think that I probably was immature to handle it at that time. Right. It might have, like, put, you know what I mean, got me in trouble. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? I mean? Well, the thing is, you know, if you can't handle it, right? Like, so I smoked starting at, like, 16. Everybody telling me it's bad. I'm at private school, though, and all my mm-hmm. white friends are smoking it, and all my black yeah. friends are smoking it. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, none of y'all play sports, but y'all all the straight-A students, y'all all mm-hmm. the people that want to go to the smart Ivy League schools, but y'all smoking weed, eh? And so I went to, I smoked it at my one friend's house and I'm like, yo, this joint don't make me, I feel great. Right. So then I smoked it again and I smoked Mm -hmm. it again. I was like, I feel (laughs) amazing. And then because sports was so big, I played in the WCAC. So we're playing against the the Mathas of the world. And so my body's already starting to hurt. Yeah. So by my junior year. So I'm like, yo, it really makes me feel good. Yeah. Uh, then obviously you got to play that devil's advocate where they weren't testing us in school, but once I got to college, you know that's when they started drug testing you, and mm. um, and so even in college though, like we had a big track meet, like all the upperclassmen, like our backup quarterback was like one of the biggest dealers on the team, like pounds on the table. Right. And so I'm a I'm a freshman. I'm wet behind the ears, and it's twenty yeah. dudes in there. And they rolling blunt after blunt after blunt. The next day, mm. I get called by the trainer, like, yo, you got to come take a drug test. I'm like, oh, you know, but what am I thinking? Whole time I'm thinking, yo, they going to think I'm not the black, because I'm, I'm the clean cut black kid, private yeah, school. Yeah, I'm not yeah, supposed to make no yeah. mistakes. Right. You know, but as soon as you make that one mistake, what do they do? You, he a weed head, he a pothead, he, yep. he this, he that, he that. Uh, you get suspended. Uh, you want ESPN, and they say, why is he not playing? Oh, he yeah. broke team rules or he failed a drug test. Uh, and so it's all those little things. But whole time, they'll give you the, the Percocets. They'll give you the pain pills. They'll give you the shots. They'll give you all these different things. But, you know, the things that are, is truly helping us recover and be ready to play and perform at a good level uh, is, is illegal. You know, yeah, exactly. but then we don't, we don't have a voice. We can't really speak to it because the people they locking up is us. Mm-hmm. And so... Yeah. The weed that we get in this black market weed, because exactly. it's not legalized and all these different Talk legal about it, yeah. bullshit. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it ties us up and we have no voice, no validation. And that's why I love what like all the smoke is doing with like Matt Barnes and Al Harrington with Viola. Absolutely. Um, you have to, you know, we have to build these organizations that give us a voice and a platform, you know, kind of like athletes and cannabis. And that's why I started. Yeah. It's just like we can we can have these conversations where this is real life, right? These are real stories, real experiences that 
tend to not be shared because we may not have anybody that created the platform. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right, but right. It gives I remember, voice. like, and I remember you're 100 percent right with how the cannabis was. I remember surviving off of it. Like, I remember my boy got some. My first brick that I seen was when I was like a freshman in college too. It was the same type of scenario. Right. College, clearly, D three they wasn't drug testing no fucking body. They couldn't even afford. It. So right. people, yeah. don't, people don't, but people don't get it. Like when I came up, they wasn't even giving us gloves. Right. Yeah, and so I, we had I, mean, to, I went to OU. Like we really yeah. didn't that until we started winning. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Which is fucked up because we out there paying for shit, paying for school already. And then, I mean, I remember being had having to like, my boy was was doing uh he did my boy who played ball he had graduated he was alumni he was doing security at Dick's Sporting Goods right hustle <laughs> hustle so we was so he's like yo come in there and grab some Under Armour because we in Buffalo New York yo we we yo we are half a mile away from Lake Erie right it's brick dog it's just snow is brick yeah it's going to hit like game four they're not giving y'all over. no cold gear <laughs> they ain't giving us shit yo. Know? Pads and sweats, and, and yeah, a shirt and a hoodie, maybe or something. Me out there, like you better get. It. So we out there grinding for it. So I remember my one boy's like, "Yeah, fuck all this shit." You got the brick, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I remember butt busting it down. I had all types of seeds and stems in it, but I'm thinking that people were all excited because it's just new. It's from Cali. It was, it was through his frat bro. You know what I mean? It came through, and it helped us all out. It helped me like had a good Christmas that year, and I was able oh, to yeah. get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit, people don't get it. Like, but I never touched it. Then never was like I was, you know, away from it. So then I go to the NFL, right? And then at that time it was '05, and I remember my dad was a coach too, right? On the bikes. So your dad was a coach at the same time you're playing. The same time I'm playing. So like, I actually came in because it was like Buff State. I didn't get drafted, right? So I knew it wasn't get drafted because the way the stats were, we I had a bad coach for like the last three, two years. Right. My first freshman coach was who's there now was Coach Boys. He was a legendary coach. I remember he he was like the perfect coach to me because he was he treated me like a man. Mm-hmm. And he just wasn't didn't have to yell too much. Just looked at you like yo, because I wasn't a guy he had to yell at. You know how we right. are. Like right. you're a guy that, that ain't stubborn. No coach right. don't have to yell at you. Right. You but treat me like a human being. Treat me like <laughs> exactly. Because I remember I like a man. Like, like, yeah, like I did some drunk shit. Got you know. This is it. That's why I said I hate alcohol. I remember I did some drunk shit. Threw up. Had to go get my stomach pumped. And the ambulance came to the fucking dorm and shit. And had to get me out of there. So he heard about it. He's like, "Don't do that again, right?" right. Like he's that a little quick little combo. You saw me one on one. That's all you knew. You knew you fucked yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. He's like, you know, I heard that's going on. You all right? He's like, you know, that's not gonna happen again, is it? And I was like, no. You know, and I remember just walked away like, yeah. And I remember I was never disappointed because he knew me. I never right. disappointed him ever again after that. Right. And then when, he, so, and I had my best years when he was a coach. You know what I mean? And the next year, he had a new coach and he opened it up and I had a good year that year, but it was still not the same, right? And right. Then, so then my, my, my senior year, the stats were kind of low. So I knew it wasn't getting drafted, right? And mm, here we go again. I was, I was really sick. I got, I caught strep throat, I think like three weeks before I was supposed to go like to this all-star game, the senior bowl. Right. right. And my dad linked it up. I was going to go to the right. senior bowl and play, right. but he was, but I was like 235. And he's like, nah, we ain't gonna have him, have him out there looking like you know what I mean. You don't want to look crazy. Mm-mm. That's why so I, I didn't. Got, do it. That's why I didn't do any uh, all star games because yeah, my senior year I played on two high sprained ankles, and so I was mm. like, I'm gonna just recover and try to be a yeah. for a pro day and all that. Right, I right, and that, <laughs> and here's another thing too: we didn't have any like combine training. Right. So when they get these tests, I wasn't really, I was testing good, but they didn't even know I could have been testing on some other shit. I was still running for like my highest four, four, six, two, you know what I mean? Around right. 40, dude, you know, good high numbers, 225, uh, four, 15 times. But when I look back on it now, how I could have been, and right. that's with how these guys with the knowledge and the, and the, and the, oh, the training, training is, yeah. dog, I could have, you know, easy four, three, easy four, four. Cause I was that bad. I, I would, I was that fast, and I, was, right. I mean, as far as the athlete, I'll tell you why. Um, yeah, my boy is doing. So, uh, my boy who trained me, he actually doing speed training right now, specifically okay. in uh, in San Diego. And mm. I think he trained at least four to five top five guys in this past pro day or in fact this wow. past draft. I mean, he had Joe Burrows. He had, okay. Chase, I believe, he had Chase Young for a little bit. Um, he had a couple dudes, and I'm like. That's but he, he, he's breaking it down, you know, in terms yeah. of the speed, like 
you know, he got a couple rugby players, USA rugby Olympic players, a couple track mm-hmm. people. Um, but he literally breaking it down for like 10 yards. You know, yeah. Breaking yeah. the mechanics down in that drive phase, mm-hmm. everything to a science mm-hmm. where, you know, he is studying people and like all he doing is speed. He, he don't focus yeah. on nothing else. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I'm right. Like, when I, yeah, because when, when I transition, yeah, because when I studied this, when I studied it, as far as like now, when I'm looking at it for the past, especially three years, I'm I'm I'm, I'm excited because I get you know I'm not jealous because I'm I feel you know, but I'm always like you know back in my head like man, this right. knowledge back in our day would have been unbelievable because you know how they're training now with one your health, right? Two, yeah every movement is now getting broken down. You know what I mean? Every type of like, yeah, that 10 yard, that five yard, if it's football or, or right. and now if you look at it, even just like basketball, specific drip, like now your hand, everybody hand the right. ball, man, yeah, like how right. size you are. Yeah, you can't just be like six, nine, you need a post. But then they did it, you, you're going to do everything. Yeah. Right. You got, you got LeBron, you got KD. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> they seven footers, right? So. LaMelo ball right. now. Right, exactly. And so incorporating all that, you know, does the when I was coming up, we barely even had any of that knowledge. So when I got to the league in the NFL, what happened was I got a call, you know, obviously the fights like, yeah, we're gonna take you. And what it, what it was even, it was a two uh two day like tryout. Mm-hmm. Literally. It was during a mini camp. Right. You don't notice, and it was from both states, so they were like, it was like not even official yet. I had to sign an insurance that's, waiver saying, Well, that's the stuff that we don't talk about either. Yeah, but like, yeah, you like you can make it to the league, get these little trials, but what yeah. happens in these trials? What's exactly. the fuck going on in the mm-hmm. tryout? Yeah, I had to sign an insurance waiver saying if I got hurt, they wouldn't cover it. So there wasn't them some situation where I got in there one day, boom, break my knee, and right. I'm on the I'm on Vikings IR, right? right. But also, too, though. That plays into the bigger picture of like what's currently going on in the NFL, right? exactly, and why exactly. these guys don't do anything, right? They they right. Really, they really muzzled because everybody knows that man. I only got maybe three years. Yes, you know, absolutely. And, so, and they don't have the insurance coverage. They don't have the guaranteed contracts. But the NFL is America. Yeah, it's what it is. It, and I mean, and they don't give a damn at, you, at the end. You're a, you're a number. You're still a number in a body. Like you can do all what you want to. You treat it. It's a job. It's business. But um, but, and so, like, I ended up like in that two days. Two days. Okay. Going off, and they actually ended up cutting a guy who was there for like here we go, two right. three years. You made that guy. That, and and he cut. They cut him. Like you get out of here. We want to sign TJ. And that's how it happened. And then boom, it was like, you know, and so there we go again without having out. So then I remember first time I seen the cat smoking. And yeah, we ain't gonna say no names. You no, know, you don't have to. That. We're gonna keep it, yeah, you can't keep it gangsta. Because <laughs> I'm always like, I want this to go on platforms and then, you know, we don't, right. but like, cause I know like, like I'm talking like people who on TV right now, we'll put right. it that way, right. that were smoking, right. all famous. Chiefing. Chiefing, um, and I remember like just drinking because I didn't. I can be around smoking if I had a buzz, right? So I'm drinking, right. you smoking. I'm cool. I ain't gonna hit it. I don't really want that shit. And then on top of that, I knew the drug test situation. I'm like, I'm, right. I'm always going to piss clean. Plus, my dad is on the fucking coach. coach. I'm right. quite sure because they had it was a two strike program. Like the first strike, you piss dirty. You get into a program. They don't put it in the media. <laughs> But you know everybody know right. in that organization. It ain't no fucking right. <laughs> So we know they keep so it. Touch, but... Yeah, so I didn't touch that shit. Wasn't even in my head. But then again, here we go. So then, like the whole career happened, and then like so again, I played. But then, uh, 04 was the year, and then 05 I, again, I came around and got allocated by NFL Europe, and that was a good year for me, right? Real good year. But so then, when I get to the training, that was the first time I had real training. Mm-hmm. Like real good, like D one up professional training. So my right. body was getting more. So in right. 05, when I had better knowledge, because then like like 04 got released, and they signed me back mid season, said, "Okay, your future contract released back." Now I'm I'm on it. Right. So 
I play and so I train even get right. NFL Europe doing well. Have a have a crazy event. Not even this is this is a crazy story. I got I have my face in titanium because I ended up having this huge like fight in NFL Europe. I got hit in the face with the bat. And I wasn't even a fighter. I was like the person who was getting everybody out of the way. I was just about to die. Yeah. So, but the well, thing that happened, it was just like a six week situation. So the Vikings were on my side and they knew what happened. So nothing was like, it was all good. Right. So then I come back home early. This is like, well, the thing that's hilarious. I come back to like six weeks early because I trained whatever. And I ended up doing like a good summer of training, mm-hmm. real training again. But dog about camp. No one could say by 05, I'm the fastest tight end there and the strongest tight end there. The most athletic. It's not even it's right. not even an issue. They, they were scared of me. Right. Like it was competition. Rich I, all these dudes were taller, six uh uh-uh. right. I was six five, two fifty. I mean, benching, benching and, and overall being an athlete, not just benching and squatting, but knowing that training and getting it was like it wasn't even that a game. Different, yeah. That train and and then like running form, all that shit. Like I was like they had me. It was like and then they were even watching the training. Like yo, TJ about to get this real shit. Right. So I made the squat and then fractured my ankle. Mm. And then it was like in, in practice too. So it was like a, a real bad injury too. Like it was right. facing the other way and everything. Again, here you go. They got pills all over the place, right? Pills all over the place. And I remember being almost caught up on oxycodone, like, because I was just popping the 500s. Right. And then next thing you know, I'm using it to go to sleep. And then next thing you know, you know, hey, you know, just popping them. And then I felt to start feeling weird every once in a while, so now I could stop. So I, was, I wasn't like, but they almost got me. It was pretty close to being like, let's start, let's, let's right. take it but get loopy. Right. So then... Again, with the with, with cannabis, it was never an issue. I never really, you know, it was always a get high shit. That that's why I stayed away from it. Even though my Jamaican background, all that shit was there. You know, not everybody who's a, in the Caribbean knows that yeah, it smokes. Like it's not even like that. It, you either choose it or you don't, right? Right. So then I got to um, I played some arena football in Rochester. That's why it's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's Rochester like Raiders. Yeah. At the end of the season, we we're undefeated. Whatever. I remember going through, we were going through some like real shit. Like it was like money, like money was low at that point. Like I played for a couple of years, but everybody know people, people know what it is. Just because you didn't the NFL mean no. like you make tons of money and you handle it right. Like I was young, you know what I'm saying? Like I was. Well, and that's the thing. You making money so fast. Yeah. At, at a rate where you are, you have to spend it big. Like you got to mm-hmm. buy a nice house, a nice car, Absolutely. some jewelry. You got to have a trainer. You got to have a chef. Mm-hmm. Like you're going out to eat. You take yeah. the ice. Mm-hmm. You know, like there is all these different little metrics that. Yeah. Even, like you think as a young kid, like, like you, I, I tell people like as black kids, we think if we make a million dollars, we rich for the rest of our lives. Not really. Absolutely. Like, you made a million dollars, so now you got a million dollar lifestyle. Yeah. And so Yeah. It's expectations now. Yeah, and everybody's piggybacking off of you. Right. But then you don't really have any true connections or relationships with anybody. So you buying everything right. retail, but you don't have good credit. You ain't starting no businesses. You know what I mean? You're not hiring mm-hmm. nobody. You're not making no real, real money because yep. you get paid. Mm-hmm. If, if if you don't get a check at the end of your game, like you don't live. You can't pay your yeah. bills. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so and, it's an illusion that we've mm-hmm. been brainwashed into believing and thinking, and a lot of mm-hmm. our players are still brainwashed because they yes. just because they're celebrities now that tomorrow mm-hmm. they will be the same. And I, like I tell even guys that's playing, I'm like, yo, you better squeeze it right now. Yeah, because as yeah. soon as you're done, it's over. Yeah. Yeah, like, as soon as those fans don't care about you anymore, they don't. They don't like that. You think because in the moment you think you're gonna live forever, right? Like the first time dressing old five, where like you got kids calling your name, right? They know who you are, and if, and you really haven't even done much yet. But it's just those 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 right. fanatics, those ones, and then, you, right. and then you show up, and then they talk about you in the news a couple of times, like me and shit, and then you right. then you get out there and you're playing, and people cheering, you got eight thousand people yelling, and, you know, you do some right. shit. And you think, and then you get comfortable, like, yeah, I, I, I'm old, this is something. Yeah, like. You don't I'm, work hard I'm for it. I mean, but, yeah. in, but in any profession, if you work that hard, as hard as we work for football, you are very successful. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because you, like, you put in the work. 
that amount of work that we yeah. put in, whether it's through practice, training, um, the execution in, in games to make it to that, because it's a lottery, right? It's mm-hmm. a lottery to say you're going to make it Division One, Division Two, whatever, mm-hmm. and then Absolutely. make it to the pros. So we mm-hmm. know that that's a lottery that if I put that amount of energy into engineering, Right. That amount of energy into writing or being a journalist or being a media personality, whatever, a journalist, mm. you gonna be exceptional. Absolutely. But whole time, our pot of black men are all fighting for these same positions, mm-hmm. whether it be mm-hmm. football, basketball, rappers, actors. Yes. It's like, yo, the whole pot. Like, I know millionaires that that'll make a million off of this. Mm-hmm. Off, yeah, off of, you know it's great, yeah. but it's like the, right. the, yeah. contain, the container of yeah. something, you know. Yeah, but yeah, but you know, we put all of our energy and effort into that, and then it, it molds who we are as men. Mm-hmm. You Absolutely, know? our community Absolutely. judges us based on it. White people yeah. judge us based on yeah. it. Yeah, because like it was like it was either the three when you walk around, especially me, being six five, right, and, and big right. at that right. point. Who are Where you? you? Play? You're you the hooper. Yeah, like, exactly. You, you, you can you, you. It's almost like you better be playing football because you just can't be out here big for no right. reason. Looking you're like waste, that, you look like you're a waste friend. of size. Man. Waste of size. Yeah, all that size. I'd be making so much money. Right. And then I'm like, I don't know if you work as hard as me, bro. I don't know if you de- if you dedicate. I don't know if you went out there and had that football, especially football mentality, where it's like we have, we especially in football, people don't get it. Every play could be your last. It ain't like. It ain't like some basketball thing where you're coming down, you just run up and down the block. Right. Nah, bro, like, we got to go. Nah. We got to play. Line side you know, hit. <laughs> yeah, when you're on that field, you are running like you are literally jumping. People don't get it. You are almost jumping off the cliff every play, and you don't care. You got a parachute, which is your helmet and your pads. So, come on, let's go. Let's get a touchdown with this shit. Like, I don't, it's, and it's that. Over that, and over and over. Yeah, it's that blue screw that we have <laughs> to play football. People don't get it, that, that we right. channel it in. So when you get hurt, you start to kind of slow, you know, every once in a while after what getting hurt over and over again. And right. you're like, okay, hold on, motherfucker. Right. Like now, you know, so I remember playing arena and um having the first, you know, at the end of the season smoking just, just some trash weed with you know, streaks in my chest, like they all put some shit. Dirt. Getting high, yeah. And it was just like it felt like, oh, you know, getting the you got. And so you went through that. That high stage, and then it went to the UFL, where at this point, about a year and a half later, I had, you know, went to Canada, you know, what I'm saying from Buffalo, like crossed and smoked some good air there. So I was kind of know I'm knowing now I'm knowing a couple new strains. Right. I'm knowing what you know. We I still don't know what, the, what to the, look for. And shit. Exactly. But that's the thing too is education, right? We still yes. have to educate. We can't just smoke and be like, "Yo, I'm just smoking." I'm just smoking. You know, yeah, I'm just smoking. getting high. Yeah. What are we smoking? And, like, right? <laughs> what mm-hmm. are the contents? You yeah. Know? How was and this all this world, was? Right? Yeah, and it was like all this was evolving, right? And so then. Basically, you know, at that same time after UFL got had another at some of my meniscus, I had another knee scope and I bounced back from that. And after the year, I was like, all right, I know this is it. Like every once in a while I get that itch. Right. But I'm like, I don't feel like getting hurt again. Right. And I knew when I had that feeling that it's time to like, you know, all right, let's focus on the next chapter. I never had had a problem getting a job. I never had a problem. Again, I played ABA basketball, so I never had a problem. Right. Live, Give that to him. Work. Now, then with the cannabis situation, now I'm now incorporating it, but I still want to keep in shape. We're right. playing rec shit, whatever. Now I'm starting to incorporate it and getting the knowledge of what it actually does. Right. So then, especially when I started getting to the new strains, I say about two, 2016, mm-hmm. 2017. And that was also when I was starting to became fully roused to fire and doing everything that I was doing and all the knowledge of the cannabis. So now we're talking about what I like naturally growing. You know, now I'm in the street, you know, me and my boy were growing shit like here, there, here and there. Yeah, I saw you and got then, your own little brand. You got your brand too, right? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. The BSRC, right? It's going to be good because I have own like real grow. I appreciate it. Yeah. And now I'm getting to that point and I get mad because <laughs> I'm like, yo, how this benefits is a crime that when people are hurt, when people are sore, to not have, you know, CBD creams, live resin creams, uh, ingesting CBD, using it. Because now it's 
I mean, on your joints. I mean, because what we went to gummies, out of all that shit to go to sleep, especially. I mean, days before the game to be able to, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that anxiety to be able to night before the game take a little thirty or fifty milligram, you know, gummy, whatever fuck, to make sure that yeah, you always gonna go to sleep and then. By the time you wake up by game time, you're good by like 7 a.m. You're not going to have that droggy shit, so you get a good strain and da-da-da-da. And then maybe even both. And maybe these dudes can, like like us, can be like yeah, five, four hours before the game. Yeah, you know, I'm going to smoke a, a fucking good sativa that's right. light and then have a CBD, let's say a pure extract dab, which, right. I, which, which clears you right up. And then you go out there and, you know what I'm saying? And you're right. not even affected. Right. And we know, um, we know what it feels. Well, because so, it was I mean, that's game. why we need our own leagues, bro. Exactly. Because yeah. that shit should it. be, mm-hmm. yeah, they couldn't handle that shit. That, that, they would see the injury rates go down. They would see mm-hmm. how, it, you know, because when I even work out, I incorporate now with the workout. Now, basically, my thing is when I work out and do all that stuff, I, don't, I smoke maybe light before my workout. But even sometimes if I'm doing it in the morning, I don't have to, right? right. But afterward. It's it's my body needs it. It's like right. it's and that then, recovery, and I, yeah. It's that it's recovery. It's part of that recovery, yeah. Right. And there's well, your no body, way you got to rebuild the muscle, absolutely. You know, that you just destroyed, and so sitting down, exactly. you yeah. know, the cannabis goes in and does its magic. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And that's the it's it ain't no it's not a drug. It's it's a herb. And the fucked up well, part you know, about it's all, it again, it's all illusion and wordplay. Yeah. So yeah. you it's we just see just crazy you know, wordplay. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But, you know, that's why we got to get involved in politics and, and speaking and using our platform mm-hmm. and our voices because if you can have one man say, you know, you Jerry or what Anslinger or whatever his name is, and somebody like that be in such a powerful position that they could mm-hmm. sway, you know, the the opinion that everybody just assumes that we gonna put weed with criminal and demonized and is it's like yeah, like. It's mm. definitely criminal, you know? And then yeah. we're saying, like, white people smoking it the same as mu- amount as black people are, but, you know, we can't just be out here smoking it and la di da di da Yeah. You know, we I don't- mean, <laughs> yeah, these, I mean, these people were not only smoking, but, like, they can smoke it and then get involved in business. Right. Oh, they, they, and, they, and, they and be they completely, <laughs> yeah, it can be completely at the top Hold of the whole type of situation, and meanwhile, knowing that you got people that are black, completely one weed, like, literally, no pun intended, weed the fuck out. Right. And not even able to get to, because, like, I always look at the situation like, man, if that was a black company, ain't no way they'd be able to get away with that shit. You know, and it's just it's refreshing to see, like, you know, companies like that have like Al Harrington and some of the ones down in Cali that are black owned right. and, and getting involved. But it was almost like I saw them, it was just like they made sure that it was a little bit too late. Right. Like you had to well, get they, you had even to have, the reason they could get involved is because they have extreme amounts of liquid capital. Exactly. Like, or like, like, like Jay Z just, yeah, yeah, Jay Z just got involved. Look at his, yeah, Jay Z got involved. Yeah, he could get involved. He had a one billion dollar, you know, situation. Al Harrington, yeah, huge capital. You know what I mean? Right. Not only him, but you probably, you know, he he put together a couple more other investors that you probably oh, got know. some people who got together. Yeah, exactly. He did it. He so, did it great, but it mm-hmm. took that for him to use. And he's using his platform well, but mm-hmm. it's like, how many more guys can do that? And mm-hmm. then, like, how many black people aren't in the spotlight like that that do have money mm-hmm. that don't like weed or to mm-hmm. completely against it? Mm-hmm. But it's like, yo, like, when you look at the the cannabis plant as an industry, you're talking about industrial uses. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. yeah, you, you can be against the weed and being high all you want to, but you're talking about food. Yeah, you're talking about oil. You're talking mm. about agriculture, mm. cleaning the air, purifying the soil. You're Absolutely. talking about clothes. Mm. You're talking mm. about straw. You're talking about so many different things that you have to yeah. be a visionary to see. But guess what? It's legal now. Yes. And so yes. hemp is cannabis, mm. but hemp is regulated through the USDA, right? Which is com- completely different. I'm in Ohio, mm. so the USDA hemp program is completely different than the medical marijuana program right okay so and uh, and then that here and then breaking it down state to state the reason why in the states is that you're gonna there, it's these drugs are that people have are already legalized on that national level 
So every state is involved in that, right? So then when you get to like, okay, this state has that, that's the same. Those your, those your situation it ain't the same that it was in Texas, right? Or ain't the same how it is in even New York State. You know, they're still not even because it's a city. You know, we can upstate to easily handle a, an amazing cannabis growth. Sure, it wouldn't yeah. be an issue. Right. They're worried about they legalize that shit down the city. You know what I'm saying? With all these birth, like it's going to be the corruption. Blah, blah, blah. And it's really like, nah, what you don't understand is if you just legalize it the correct way, which is allow people to have their sports fronts, allow people to do this, you know, the crap shit. Allow people to grow their own plants. Grow their own plants. And then they should just have the proper store fronts. Right. That's what you need to add. I mean, I mean, there's places like even like California that are pretty good, but they're suffering because of now the government's like, yeah, they're going to do that. But these are the taxes that you're going to pay. Right. And people are like, still, now they got to jack up the price on the herb, even, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, they fighting out there like, it's okay, but we got to, we got to jack up That's the price. Thing. You can't, uh, the problem is you can't control a plant. No. Talk about it. So if I could take a million seeds and throw mm-hmm. them out, how you going to tax that and tell me what that, what I could do with it, what I can't do with it, how I can utilize it? Like, it's impossible, you know, but that's what we're continuously trying to do. And it's like, yo, like, if I got a couple of plants over here, like, that should be allowed. Like, the uh, there's a guy that I know that's a pretty good grower out here. And he, so he utilized the caregiver um, clause in the law, which mm-hmm. basically states that if you're a caregiver, you can grow plants for your patients. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of like the California law, I believe, uh, where you can have up to like six plants per patient or something. And so okay. he was he was utilizing that because there's no way where in the Ohio law that says you can't do it, but he mm. got raided just on principle. Basically, they basically just trying to scare him. But when you look at the laws of the reality, like a lot of these laws are flawed because it's new laws. You know right. I mean? So it's absolutely you know, because it's it's part of the mm-hmm. law, mm-hmm. And, and it's almost to the it's that that older generation that is still having that influence right. when you're in politics they're in they're in office right yeah they're, they're 60, in power, 70, right? yeah 56 50, late 50 60 70 so when yeah. were they born there's some Boom. people in their 80s 80s yeah yeah you're right but so they, they don't they don't really have the the knowledge still they, they still think it's like okay you're just gonna get this and when you talk to them like okay y'all want to get higher we'll but they don't even understand nah, 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 nah. yeah uh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, we got social media these days where yeah. people are getting more access to information where it's like, yeah, we're not stupid anymore. Right? Yeah, you can't hide the truth. You can't hide, you the, can't hide the benefits. Like, of oh, black yeah. people ain't being murdered by the cops. Well, here it comes. Oh. They just murdered another black man just the other day. Mm. So it's mm-hmm. happening every day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we're seeing it in the information. And so it's like, well, America was founded on those principles. So how do you think it right now? How, what, what we think it was... You know, but we continue yeah. to, you know, capitalism, right? You still got to keep moving around. Everybody's still right. working. Everybody's and still they, working. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. They, and I mean, to me, like you said, the cannabis plant, until it is treated, like I said, until it's treated like basil. Right. <laughs> where you can go to the fucking grocery store. Right. And pick up clones. Right. That That's when you know. When you have a, when you fucking realize that instead of having these open fields with nothing going on and because you mow it down, you plant a hemp, you plant some hemp in there, right? And making the air clean, paper, paper. I mean, I mean clothes. You can build a house with hemp, and it's stronger and more biodegradable. Like right. it's, it's, it's. You can't oh, hide this shit. So they're just like you could tell they're just kind of compressing it, like keeping it down. Like you right. can't, and you can't. Right. Like dog, yeah, man. What are you talking about? You can't hide it anymore. You know, and I, 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 well, I mean, now people in other states using it, and like I'm in Ohio, like yeah, this is crazy, like. Mm-hmm. But if I could go to Detroit, I could go to buy some recreational. I guess, yeah. Like, but and, and that determines economies, right? People decide, hey, I'm gonna move and live someplace where it's legal. Absolutely, especially if I need it for medical purposes. Yeah. Right? It um, in New York State, I'll tell you the story of this. They allowed medical, but to get medical, it took. We can talk about race. They're fighting in Albany, yeah, trying to get it, get shut down. 
Well, all of a sudden, a lady spoke up and was like, because what was happening, you're so right about the move, people were going to Colorado. Right. Oh, yeah. So she believed in a tincture from her, from her kid and wanted to give the proper medicine. So right. she was fighting it for a year or two. Well, the boat was late and all these things. The child passed away, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. So then the white man, woman, literally, and the mother stood up and right. ended up within about two and a half months. They legislated medical. Oh, yeah. People she don't get this shit. Yeah. She but went she hard. Did, she went to politics. She went to politics. You know, she, so probably, she, probably, she probably eat, slept, and shit. Yeah. That and she cost. even like and, and, she, and she wasn't even like happy about it. She's like, Yeah, thank you, but you're a little bit too fucking late. Right. And I appreciate her doing that. She wasn't right. like, Yeah, I, no, she was like, Yeah, okay, but you're late. Like, you think this is what it is? Like, I could you could have just did this years ago how it's supposed to be. Um, so then it got changed to where now they have, they have small little medical things where you get like a small, like it's little, little small oils, like it's nothing, you can't get no damn flour, what the fuck so ever. It's still, you know, he, and Governor Gummo, he's sitting there, he, he, he's, he's, he's not going to do it. You no. can just tell. You can be Democrat all you fucking want to. You can come with the fuckers and he's just not going to do it. Yeah. That's the business situation. That's why I hate about it. Right. It's not because of its health. They right. all know it. Well, because they get paid. They getting paid from pharmaceutical companies. Yes. And, yeah. the, and the, uh, the big healthcare companies. Mm-hmm. That's why that's why the, the 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 rates are going up because they're getting paid. Absolutely. You know. They're getting paid a lot and they're getting paid a lot of money. They're getting paid they they're, they're, they're getting paid they're getting, industry, that's the that's where all the money at. Yeah, I mean you're talking trillions, not billions, trillions. So in the case with cannabis, it's such a self sufficient thing where you can have a corner in your house and grow four or five plants and if you're not that consumer that you know, goes hard, like hard, super, super hard, like most of us, you know what I'm saying, right. whatever, you can have off that yield, a good, you know, two and a half peas, pounds, right. that breaks over some, some people can make that last for almost eight months, so they're looking right. at this, like, like, oh my God, these people can grow this medicine in their own house, or, and, and don't let them get property, right. and, they, it, it, it. yeah, they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll never, burdens. They'll they'll never buy anything ever again. They'll be just local little small so that, you'll, never, you'll never buy another pill. You'll, yeah, when because when I got to the cannabis, to probably because <laughs> when I got to the cannabis, the last time I've taken anything was an antibiotic. I think in two thousand, I want to say fifteen. That was when I was doing music and I caught a little bit of a, a throat bug because mm-hmm. uh, I had to take the Greyhound bus down right. to Virginia. Mm-hmm. And I, and I remember just being on this girl's coffin, and I remember I just, I wasn't sick at the time, but I remember after there was like two weeks, I just I couldn't kick it, and I remember right. eight weeks, I just, every time I smoked, I had a little bit of, just a little cough, I wasn't right, right, right. sick or nothing, yeah, you know, right. sick or nothing. But I remember I just, I remember my mom was like, yo, I got too many bottles, just take that, clear all, clear that off, so that, just right. whatever it is in there. And I remember I took it, and I remember again, a whole week process, because it clears everything out, people don't get that. Right. So you got to replenish your shit. So I was kind of, I was knowing this since I was slowly getting into the health. So then that was the last time I ever took something that was like a medicine. Everything mm-hmm. else has been a bad air element, cannabis and tea. Cannabis right, right, and tea, right. cannabis, yeah. herb, and, and, and whatever I need to ingest. Right. Fruits, whatever. Well, even food, food, man, like our, yeah. ed- our lack of education of understanding mm-hmm. what real food is, like even in the, you know, going to the grocery store, you know, you got people yes. eating food that's not even real food. Like, yo, I mean, I remember when I remember when I was playing too, right? This is why you were talking about money earlier. The knowledge wasn't there. I had my, I had a spot, right? Two bedroom, five apartment, nice kitchen in there. But guess what? You know, playing sports. This is the thing too. The knowledge, you funny. They would give, they gave us a little bit of a health book, right? Like during the in the play situation, right? <laughs> And there was, you know, it was all about meats and shit. Now, mind you, too. It's I'm all about meat. Them protein. Vegan. I'm yeah, right. I'm vegan, right? So I'm like, yeah, protein, protein, chicken breast, you know, skin, steak, like all this shit. And then they even recommended the fast food. They're like, if you're gonna go fast food, do Wendy's because at the time Wendy's was still people don't get it in '05. They were still kind of like a craft fast food. So. Wendy's is actually founded in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Like, I, I literally live right next door to like their headquarters. It's crazy. Funny is that funny is my roommate in Buffalo, 
of New York, his family's from Columbus, his mom, okay. and, he, and he's like an entrepreneur, real special people come out of Columbus, shout out to Columbus. Yeah, right. Columbus is a special place, they, they been special from Hollywood, but it's a lot Different of money, it's a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, a lot of money, a lot of bosses come from Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Um, but um, they say if you build a business in Columbus, if it's able to work in Columbus, they pretty much didn't go anywhere. In yeah, he go anywhere. He came from there. He bought a model too, Buffalo, New York. He been one of the best barber shops in Buffalo, New York, real quick too, like right. six months. You know what I'm saying? I remember he was he saw me too. He saw I was smoking. He's like, yeah, I've never seen anybody smoking in my life. Now this is when I was like 2008, like 2015, 16. Really, yeah, he he saw me getting involved into the roster, right? So he okay. saw me. I was just like. Right, ninth floor. I had a few. It was a beautiful spot, big windows. So I'm out right. there, just you know, and then in the whole building, everybody's going to school. Right. Um. But but like getting back to that the, that food in 2005, like they recommended Wendy's, right? So Wendy's was like, because it wasn't really fast. Wendy's, remember at that time, Wendy's would take it would take like five minutes to make the food. Right. Shit, yeah, they, they had the fresh um, burgers. And then Friday, when we had practice. They would cater food. It was always some shit like Famous Days or whatever. So some barbecue, whatever kind of, you know, recommended. Or, you know, it was never anything that was good. And then remember, nice poor game Saturday. I know this has changed now. Right. This is people don't understand. I know this has changed completely. This changes now. fast too, though. Yeah, yeah. They had like just five, they had good years. Food. Yeah, they had good food. But remember, they had to, remember that pasta shit, that, that, that pasta. You know, everyone like thinks pasta is the night before the game. Carbs for energy. And that wasn't right. it at all. Right. That, that's, that's not, that is so I'm not true. None of that shit. Yeah, you didn't need none of it. And so I remember even cats drinking. You know, I, know, I knew cats that was like, I played better on a hangover. Go ahead. I mean, yeah, dog. Like, I knew cats that was like, we go in the room at like 10 o'clock. We got, we, listen, yo, like, they got curfew. They coming to get us at like 11. But they in the room getting to it. <laughs> like, the whole bottle of Henny to the face. Lit. I got a, and then the next game, you look at them and they, they kind of, what? You know, what? I can't say no day. Pit, two picks. You know what I mean? You know, you like how I go two picks, nine right. tackle, one for a loss. Right. It, Special teams, even play. You like, die. you look on the field like this motherfucker. Right. But right. then I remember even, but the funny thing about it, I remember almost experiencing the same thing. So I remember I was in the NFL Europe one time, and it was my birthday. And you no, know, we playing during uh, during May, so NFL Europe at the time was during you know off season. So this is another thing too. So I was playing two seasons. We gonna get a two football seasons in one That's year. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so at a high level in NFL Europe, that right. was, at that time we had. Players over there, like they were oh, sitting. Right. Everybody the who was on the variability of like you know, it's a small percentage of guys in the league. Yeah, There's a lot of guys that are athletic and physical, and but it's only so many spots. Yeah, people don't so, get that shit. Man. It was tough, yeah. and then I remember like, like, so oh seven. Yeah, I forgot oh, my deal. So like. Y'all forgot what I was going to say, because that y'all got, holy shit, because it, it, it was so, 07 was such that, that, that NFL Europe situation. Yeah, so I'm sorry. You got it. The food. The food, yeah. So, like, like 07, good year, played two seasons, and then, like, I'm eating right. I'm eating, like, by the time I get in 07, I'm eating, like, out. Right. Like wildfire, like All right. food, tons of steak, tons yeah. of shit. So then, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was during May. Now I got it. <laughs> it was during May, so it was during my birthday. My fault, y'all. It was during my birthday. Bring it back. Yeah, like, hey, bro. It was, it was smoke was good. Okay, got it. Lost we it. got, wait, we got you. We here, my yeah, brother. yeah. We get <laughs> this is this is open yeah. session. Open. Yeah, this is it, this yo. is not a a panel discussion. Yeah, exactly, yo. Straight up. So. So it was during my birthday. That's what it was. So we had right. like 48 hours before my game, but we were still, they still allowed us to go out in a spot right. called Black Sound in Germany. It was popping. It was all, it was like actually Germany, in Germany, Germany. Frankfurt. Yeah, I it was in Germany Frankfurt. When I was 15. That changed mm -hmm. my life. Changed yeah, it was life. in Frankfurt, Germany. And it was on, it was this place called Hanau, which it was right on the base. It was off the base. Right. The base. So we, so the dog, I went in there. I remember it was, I saw my nigga from Buffalo. Right, Puerto Rico. All, it was like amazing. It, all yeah, all it was like he was in the club. I'm like, yo, because right, I didn't know he was there. Right, and he knew, and he he knew I played. 
Mm. But he knew I was on Frank. Where he was like, "Yo, you here?" Like it was a, it was amazing. Like I remember, like all of my law students, it was, it was like we team. grew up together. Like right. we grew up together. Like, you and me. Like I'm talking about East Side Church. Play the church league, thirteen. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, crazy. yeah. And so my birthday, we get we get lit. Like it's just like we were. I was drinking. We wasn't part of it. Just people those small contingent because they didn't test us over there. But most of us were alligator. Okay. Right. So they didn't test us over there. All right. So one guys who didn't, so guys who didn't weren't alligated, they kind of were smoking, but the guys who were alligated, I'm, I'm part of San Diego Chargers property, I can't be smoking. They test me. Matter All of right. fact, dog, when I got signed, it was, I was like, this is why, this is why I stayed away from you too. When I got signed, I was in Minnesota at the time. So they sent me the contract. When I signed that shit, I got a knock on the door the next morning okay. at 7.30 in the morning, drug test. Uh, it's like I was nice. The guy was here to call me. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm here to, you know, right there. And he, and he had to come in my apartment and witness oh, yeah. me. So fast forward, so then boom, I wasn't. I mean, NFL Europe, ain't no way I'm smoking nothing. So we drinking, right. getting lit. Boom, I have a nice night. Boom. So then I go to practice the next day, and I have the best practice I have in my life. Like it was the most craziest shit I ever seen. It was just like, and because and and, it was just adrenaline taking over, right. but I never, so, but I, so I kind of understood. So at that time, I like, said, "Yes, I can get it." Like, why wow, these dudes were doing it, but I wasn't doing. It. I'm like, that was crazy. Right. Like, I don't know, right. for whatever reason, I was catching That's everything. Crazy. I was beat. I was cooking out there, like you know, right. whatever. So then, fast forward to when I'm in the bikes, and there was nights I catch you know, and I'm not gonna sit nothing, whatever. Actually, no, I might have like one little sip or something, right. whatever. Like a shot of a hitty, but then it wasn't. These guys just like cuffed up, like right. yeah, you know, oh, I gotta get this four eleven, yeah. And then what it should be now is cats should literally be able to smoke because when I went to the UFL, oh, the thing. Know, I knew dudes that would smoke before the game or like yeah, hype before the game, and you always knew that, right? Like yeah, especially like even in college, like dudes are smoking the, the night before the game, right before yeah. finding a way to get them to smoke, and they're yeah. all in out. Right, but whole time, like I'd be nervous, like nah, not mm-hmm. me, not me, not right? Me. And especially how the NFL is, like especially if I played now, that's the fucked up part about it. If I played now, I wouldn't smoke. You can't. You, you know how Stevie A. Smith says, "Stay off the weed." People are like, "Yo, you don't know." They, they hit him with all the facts, but I agree with him because. You got to get this Not money to, first. You got to get the money. I mean, so you got to lock bad. it in. Like, so, so, yeah. So, if I'm out there, I'm like, yo, I just got to get it's, it. T- I would be on my own bubble already. I wouldn't even be going out. I'd be on, I'd probably be a different person if I play right now. That's why probably players are, are, are probably the great players out right now. They know this. Oh, so they know they, what they, they got to do. They're all siloed. The great players are all, Yeah. Uh huh. They know what they gotta do, and then when they get out, some of them retire early because I'm not gonna feel them. Sometimes it's like, yo, I'm retired. I, I look at Megatron. Like, I think what Megatron yeah. did is, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the you're like, yo, I'm done. He seen Detroit wasn't going to do the right things to get him players and to yeah. get, try to win a Super Bowl, right? And so he was like, shit, my body, I got the bread, I'm out, I'm gonna smoke yeah. weed. Yeah, and, and, and that he, is he to go. like, if right. you get your bread, bro, you only need ten million, ten, 10 yeah. million. Yeah, and that's million. the thing. That, yeah, and that's the thing. Most of them, and that's another thing too. I think that when they get to that mentality, and when I got to that mentality myself, it was like I didn't know what real money was. Right, right. 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 You get to that ten mil. I think when players get to that level, the one great ones, they get to that level, and they know they got to play for more. So then they say, "Okay, good. I got the money. I'm set." Now I gotta chase greatness, right? right. Because that's what right. I would have to do too. You chase the Hall of Fame, you chase yeah. uh huh. Because like if you gotta find that one base, because I remember being out there and getting a little bit of comfortable, just like okay, I got money, oh, yeah. squad, let's go. You and can't that's be comfortable fucking, in the league. You that's when I got up. fucking hurt, bro. Right. That's when I got hurt. Oh, yeah. Oh, you see yeah. what I'm saying? I just was like kind of lazy on the rock. You know what I mean? But, and yeah, I like, you up for that though. Like, right? Mm-hmm. The ego, I mean, like all the guy, everybody get mad at Antonio Brown, but it's like, yo, yeah. this man's the best receiver in the league, man. Like, mm-hmm. he unstoppable. And they paid him. What do you expect? Like, yeah, exactly. Of course, and he's going to show out. Like, yeah. And then, you know what? And then you can turn around, but then to me, you got players like, you know, I'm a Buff- I'm Bills fan. You know, I'm Bills, I'm Bills all day. Buffalo is what it is. And Stefan Diggs, right? You could tell he on that militant yeah. shit. Like, he was training, and you could see him out there. And then while watching him play, I respect because you can tell he's keeping his body. Like, he's not taking too many hits. He, 
yeah, he can get down. Mark. And and when you and when I remember being in that area, now but we won some when I played, there was a player that did that. And I'm like, he's smart. Why, Marvin Harrison. Yeah. Longevity. Right. Longevity was a thing. I knew like, as a safety, it. my longevity was not there if I was going to be a hitter. If you, exactly. If you're going to come downhill, especially in that time when we played, because a lot, what would it would seem wild, you would have a little bit more longevity because yeah. of the fact now well, you can't I love, hit. I played cover two, but you can't hit nobody. <laughs> you can't hit nobody now. They have unnecessary rough. They have, you know, hitting a defenseless receiver. I'm like, what? I'm like, bro. I don't even watch. I remember. Them. I remember when I played. These hits were. That's what you were supposed to do. My dad figured you gotta punish them, dude. Like the, it was come like across the middle. You come across the middle. They got to be looking around. Don't ever and do it again. And, 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 and that's what it was. And like these, you still got guys like Fast Woods and like Jamal Adams. Like I see, he's a guy here, here. Right. but he still is getting kind of like out of that lane because right. what they that they passing more now. Oh, yeah. they passing five, well, even as, a, as a defender you like well these guys got to be smart because as a defender i gotta exactly. play longer exactly i gotta play and much I'm, longer and i'm not gonna play long if i'm a revolving door i'm always hurt exactly so i'm always and, 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 and back in those days again without the canvas there was just like you going hard you, you right. know hit it every play da, da, da. and so there was a lot more bang the injuries happening, you know. Things well, guys like aren't practicing as much these days either. And so exactly, that. yeah. I mean, you you putting on pads and shit. And I remember going back in the day, 05, 06, 07, 08, you putting pads on in December, December, November, right. and, you know, what to do. Right. And now, and that's why I say now, now it's more the the I think they're starting to understand too with the with the pandemic of how it was now they gotta seek the bubble and now practice so much. I'm like, yo, y'all see how successful y'all still playing on Sunday. Right. I mean, now you, you understand. Pro, once you become a yeah. pro, why uh-huh. am I practicing? You, you, <laughs> you know, know, I understand a couple of footwork shit. you Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, bro. We should be here with like, like working out, relaxing, and getting our bodies right for Sunday. Right. You know, getting that footwork shit is always good. I understand that and getting the walk through and all right. that shit. Yeah, mental, right, a lot yeah, of mental, I mean, mental all reps right. all day. Yeah, mental reps all right. day. You know what I mean? But I should be out here getting ready. And I right. think they're starting to see that. Right. And especially you got Thursday night games. Well, but you I got, got I mean, you got too much money on the line too. Yeah. So, you know, I got, you can't have guys out there getting hurt. And mm-hmm. that's your money player. And he told you like, yo, I need the rest. Yeah, I told you. Yeah. I need the rest. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly. You know, and and so and I'm now I'm a D lineman bread too, right? So if mm-hmm. you the GM or offensive mm-hmm. lineman that bread and he get hurt, that's right, that's you, right. You I mean, I mean, down the drain. yeah, it's, it's a lot. And, and, All for and, practice. Yeah, and the money is more now, obviously, right? They got they got you know better union than what we had. They got more money, more TV, better TV contracts. So there's a lot of money on the line. Social so they, media. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, social media. The social it's, media it's, game is different. Is there is way? Oh my goodness! Like I mean, I remember <laughs> the first thing I came up when I played was MySpace, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you had your own website. I, I like that, but now that's yeah, fast forward to now, you you can really brand yourself on a whole different level. You can even put out videos of you training and get, and these cats can see you. You know what I'm saying? So, All right. I mean, the the barrier to entry now is is obsolete, really, because yeah. you know, I tell anybody, it's like even artists or athletes. You know, you upload a video on YouTube and it go viral, and that could get you a scholarship. You know what I mean? Absolutely, you, yes. It's all about visuals. Yeah, know? the recruit the recruiting game when right. I got was uh, was all. Remember it was word of mouth letters. You know, I remember my dad wasn't even on that. Like I remember right. there was one there was one program that I wanted to talk to him, like getting my numbers out there. He was like, "Nah, I know what it is." And then later on, he he kind of apologized because it was like three years later. It was actually like a. Right, just to get your face out there and then get some letters and then maybe somebody will give you a chance, right? That's but at the time, about. yeah, at the time I, I was, I was, yeah, at the time I was getting recruited a lot, a lot of schools. I remember it was like twenty schools from, that were all D two, D three, okay, right. And the D three shit was like, well, I'm gonna go to D three. I might as well go to you know when one of the Buff State. They was we, we were there winning. You know we were they were pretty much going like a eleven and one every year going to the playoffs. Number one team in upstate, you know what I'm saying? Playing, you know, whatever. I'm like, I'm as well just, you know, stay here. Like, right. you know, 
you know, and I'm local and I'm still in a city where I'm comfortable, but I'm away from home. You know what I'm saying? I'm still like I'm, I'm 30 minutes away. So it wasn't like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like all that, when you incorporate it to, to then now fast forward to, yeah, now nationally known, I could have went to like Wyoming or some, D, you know, D1 school. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't realize all these schools out here either, right? Yeah, you, you know, all these schools out here that are our D1 or even a match school in Miami of Ohio. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Some schools right. like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Things, you know, uh, or even Youngstown State, they're, they're, they're actually recruiting for basketball, which is, like, okay. which is good too, right? So, yeah. You know, I had I had made a decision of what I knew, what I was going to play. And what made you choose like, football? You know, really, it was like I knew I was going to be a bigger size football player, as opposed to being a smaller basketball player. I'm six six five six six is not that big of a basketball right. player. And in my last senior year, my senior year, I only started realizing my game was right when I was on my own and watched and peep this. I remember I started watching like and one mixtapes. And I remember I started really working on my handle. So then, like, it was really weird. But my senior year, I remember I was like, I probably could have walked on D1 right. school. I remember even UB. Conference. Yeah, I remember UB, uh, Coach Witherspoon at UB D1 school. Mm-hmm. He had came to my games a couple of times. Because I, I was balling. Like, I, right. I, I did. I, I played basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm still in the in Winslow South, like, third in a lot of the records. Like, so it's a mm-hmm. block shots. So I'm still right. up there. And so he came. He saw me. and then, But I'd already signed up upstate. He actually later on like gave me a call later on. Okay. It was like, oh, okay, you know, maybe I was thinking about you, you know, seriously coming on out here to UB, you know, right? Playing basketball, right? But but let me change football. Was like I started seeing I got more attention from football. I knew I loved, and then on top of that, I was in that football mode. I'm ball boy mm-hmm. with my my dad's a coach. I'm, hey, I'm, Buffalo. <laughs> I'm in Buffalo, New York. Football. I'm spending yeah before the, before training camp. I'm spending another. Every since I was thirteen, I was always spending four weeks in training camp with the Bills because I was a ball boy, right? So I was working, and then I was able to like you know. So I'm in there just I'm around football. I remember my hands getting better. Yeah, I remember my hands getting better, and I didn't understand them like my because I was like catching all types of shit. Like when I was this shit, and I remember I forget, yeah, forgetting that I was always around literally footballs. Like you know, and I love football too, but I was always around them. I'm sitting there, college, right, and I'm catching right. shit, I'm catching everything. Yeah, right. that, I'm catching up. That's how I'm getting those reps, right? Yeah, and so, um, and then now, fast forward to now again, you got these kids. I mean, I heard these kids now. You know, parents built like at home gym. They get the training. They got the, they got the automatic jug machines. They got the you know. The, the ladders obviously at home and, and these athletes are just unbelievable plus the game getting faster yeah. and I think that once the cannabis then gets involved where CBD creams obviously for the youngins and then like you want to get to the point where obviously they just do exactly what they did in the NBA which say we're just not going to test for TNC right. um, especially in football that's going to be that, interesting to see this season because you know some guys is about to be coming in lit Lit, lit. <laughs> I know they always. I mean, and the thing about it too is like, you know, when Matt Barnes they talked about it, they were smelling da 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 da. Right. And I think that even with now the knowledge about cannabis, they're going to be able to smoke some good strains and then maybe be able, you know, do specific things that are going to. They're not even going to look like they lit or smell like they lit, right. but they right. might have just smoked a half hour before they got on the court. Or on the field, like you know, or whatever. Like, like, like that's why I got my bag. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You hit them exactly. and I'd be good. And most people have yeah. no idea. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I'd be Absolutely. Good. And I'd be and you're, in, and you're attentive, you're 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 on point, everything's good. And you and you you're still explosive with like your kidding. movements. And you yeah, and so it's wild it, And yeah, it so is it so is. conditioned to not like Trusted and believe it in a sense where it's like it should be natural, right? It's just mm-hmm. like, it's a plant. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like plant. we go out and admire our trees. Yes, in the fall. We admire yeah. our Christmas trees in Christmas time, right? <laughs> right, right. It, you it, should be admiring these nuts, man. Like, right, exactly. Like that's that's I don't exactly. Get it. You know, we admire big bodies of water, <laughs> like <laughs> you know. So it's just like for me, it's just simple stuff, but it's also like you know, it's to have relationship and be able to have a platform to talk, man, and engage mm. the 
because it's like it's so diverse, man. We have so many stories like yours that like how do you make it, you know, from being a ball boy to having family, be coaching to yeah. those stories yeah. need to be heard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I appreciate out. it. Man. I appreciate it. Like more than anything. Like I said, at the same time, like these, you know, these platforms that you have are you know, like you said, so they're they're pillars in the situation. Yeah. This is a pillar situation because the foundation, the knowledge has to get out and right. continue to get out just like this, you know, digitally getting out, having these talks and and spreading the awareness the correct way mm -hmm. because it was so wrong to have it done, you know, in a, in a, in a different way right. that, you know, with the wrong type of, uh, you know, knowledge on this situation, you're going to look at it differently and you're not going to be able to benefit. Right from it at all like you know what i mean and that's why i think that a lot of people now are trying to fight for it bad like like yeah, especially people need it now we got you you better good yeah it's not you just athletes need. you got veterans you got kids, yes you got moms i mean i've had so many white moms reach out to me about cbd mm. in the last two to three years because i talk about weed so much on like my personal facebook page because yeah. I, I was a coach at one of these white high schools and, you know, I'd be, yeah. in, you know, my wife's a news anchor. So I just be around whiteness all the time. Right. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they, <laughs> they, you know, like they feel comfortable with me. now, so they'll be like, Gerald, can you tell me more about CBD? You know, I'm like, yo, like you better go read your fucking book. Just like you do everything yeah. else. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not your guru now. Like, no, nah, yeah. I get locked up for shit like this. Like, right, right. Like, you right, don't go right, buy right. a pound, you know, and I'm scared mm -hmm. to go buy an eighth just to get, you know. Exactly. Um, but it's these, and I have those interactions a lot that I'm just like, yo, it's crazy because you know it's coming. Right, mm. they're going to use mm. a high-end boutique luxury CBD brand. Right, that's going to cost you five hundred dollars. Then they're going to put put the salon on top of it. They're going to actually yeah. like that's where we need to be thinking. You know, that's mm -hmm. the kind of mm -hmm. shit. You know, we need to be. You know, how can we make brands and businesses and incorporate this in our daily lives, but also commercialize it in ways that we build capital off of it. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we got to start generating that generational wealth through, you know, multiple industries. Like it's not enough for us to just have a bunch of athletes that are successful, but then know nothing about agriculture, business, entrepreneurship, right. you know, just the very basic things, cooking, restaurant, you know, retail. Like mm -hmm. we need to be in all these spaces, but a lot of our strong men are in sports. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and they're and that as I said, when they're in sports, they can't focus on that because it's impossible for them to. You know, some of them yeah, have investments in to, it. But then when you yeah. try to, they say no, like you yeah. can't be like, smart. You can't be no. like, yeah, because there's some that have like they invested in it. Like I don't think it's super like I remember some players now I've heard that they had a small investments in yeah. specific well, things, NFL, but then you can't. Yeah, and in the NFL you can't. Like when the NBA, there's a couple of ones that did. Okay. NFL, you can't. I know Clay you know, Thompson, Michigan. dude. Yeah, and even like uh, Gronkowski. Okay, yeah, go uh, but but then here's the thing: he was promoting it the year he was off, and then came back. He used to get signed, and then he there's nothing about that anymore. So my thing is the NFL just needs to do exactly what the NBA did. And then they you know the they, complete NBA play, but but clearly yes, they don't pay exactly to what the and NBA because is. they because they're so because here's the thing they're so scared and this is what I hate mm -hmm. it's it's the scaredness let's just say they did it the right way right, right? what's the, the what's right the right way? way what's the right way open it right up and let them promote it okay right promote it like you got players like I got the CB company I got the CB company this this right. you know. Having and I'm talking about the country opening it up too, right? right. Whereas right. instead of Budweiser sponsors, you got da 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 can you know what I mean? Whatever, okay. and they and they and they they don't want. Then you got players literally going to be on commercials, you know, promoting this shit the right way. Right. And then again, there you go. It becomes it becomes that much influence. Mm -hmm. So that's just that's just 
Yeah, that's just the start of it. They trying to promote because then they got you get again you got the and then on top of that, who owns these teams? Yeah, most of these people that own these NFL teams could give one fuck about cannabis or they football don't. for real or football for that matter, right? So <laughs> all their money coming that, from big business. Yeah, so on top of that, you know, really, let's. I mean, you got. I mean, the guy, guys, like I said, like Jerry Jones. You think Jerry Jones in Texas is going to want to let his players be from one of the cannabis companies? No, sir. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just the basic of it. So, um, you know, once we get to that level, and I'm, it's going to be interesting to see because Why now we sell players players talk? Why do you think more players don't talk, like, or speak up about, hmm. or try to protect, you know, or, or they, figure out a way to, you know, uh, do they know politically how to do things, like uh-uh. start a business <laughs> that you don't have to be aligned with, but you are funding that business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- there's ways where, like, I mean, come on. It's it's pretty easy to just say, okay, I'm going to give this other for my cousin, you know, $500,000 for Christmas. Right. And then like, he takes that $500,000. He takes that $500,000, and then two years, he's going to be involved in the cannabis company, and then you just, you know, you're receiving something. Like, you know how you can go around. Yeah, so that's why I think you just players, you know, don't really say much. The best ain't gonna say much, right? Um, and but they should be able to, right? They but the whole the to. whole marketing campaign of them being a successful athlete and having cannabis is the selling point. Absolutely, yeah. So exactly. what is marketing? Why do we put athletes in Nike? Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. And it's self. It, and, and, and it's self. I mean, so if. To the point where the one hander like this and Nike, right? Nike, that to the point where people 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 don't even get this to the point where I remember I played and if you wore Nike shoes and they endorsed you to get they signed you to the contract. It was all cool, but on game day, you wasn't allowed to spat your shoes. Right, you can't cover the Nike yet. You can't cover the Nike. People would thought it was funny like that. People don't get that. They were just like they would they find you or something like that. But then with the night, and so it was just kind of funny because, like, I was like, well, I spat. So I guess I got to wear a Reebok. Reebok can have that shit. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, people don't get that shit, right? So there's a lot of yeah. rules and regulations that are yeah. making that money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you, you flashy, you making money, but mm-hmm. you ain't really free. No, 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 not at like, all. When we talk about freedom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Freedom of expression, freedom right. of being like because they, like they Pete, have cause like because like peep this right now they have the situation where in the NFL they have the cleats where they spread the message and like you know specific charities All right. right. Hey, your jersey, about, hey, not to cut you off, your jersey for sale on eBay. I heard that, yeah, like one ninety, it was that. like one ninety nine. Man, you gotta yeah, go man. get that joint, man. I'm gonna cop that joint. I'm gonna cop, cop it, man. That, man. Yeah, I saw that. Shit. I was like, yeah, I, was, I saw it like a couple weeks ago. I was like, yeah, I gotta go cop that shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is it doing out there? That's the, the authentic stitch joint. Yeah, man. that's the real joint, man. The real stitch, like it's like body too tight and everything. Um, <laughs> See, the thing is, like, we get rid of that stuff and we don't think about it, but nah, that's history, man. That's it's history, your, that's yeah, kids. yeah. And that's real that's history. Your grandkids, exactly. that's your Absolutely. that's. You know, because it's intrinsic value, right? Everybody's mm-hmm. like, "Well, yeah, it's up for one ninety nine, but you actually—that's your person, right?" Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm Invaluable, I like, yeah, you earn that no shit, value right? on that. Yeah, like you can't, but but that's like a lot of a lot of hours put in, right? So you can't really put a price tag on the time, no. blood, sweat, tears, the shit that went into that you know what I mean no you can't it's just, it's, it's, there is no price tag it's, it's no it, price tag nothing. man no, we give no, up a lot of that stuff you know out of state and it's like or they take it and it's just like yo like that's mine yo like, right <laughs> right you know, it, exactly you, you go exactly and so that's why yeah I definitely gotta cop that shit I gotta get it out there and, and maybe pretty, pretty much put it in respect because I had a couple of jerseys and I uh, like do moves lost and shit right. you know you, you, lose them, you give them away yeah, it takes it for granted shit. So, but like, if fast forward to what it was now, if people were able to, because they like, you know, they allow you for cleats and more fashionable shit right, on there. Or whatever. Good. But yeah, but like, you know, if someone that was at that point were able to put like a cannabis company or a cannabis situation or, right. or a, a, a message about cannabis. Yeah, could you imagine that shit? 
You know what I'm saying? I gotta get those locked. Like, you know what I mean? So well, the whole well, the whole thing is like, oh, we got kids, right? Yeah, we're, we're exactly. promoting a violent sport. We're prom- we're promoting well, well, felonies. How about this? On top of this, man, we got kids. All this bullshit. But guess what, bro? You got Budweiser. You got the bathroom. You got Miller Light. Terrible you got, food. Kids you got eating. yeah. You got you got you got all these great everybody companies. drunk in the stands. Drunk as hell, endorsing the fuck out of some damn alcohol. Like, not, I mean, I'm trying to always say, like, yeah, come with a game drink. I'm like, yeah. It's funny how y'all just forget how, like, if, if you got 8,000 fans coming to the game and you want most of them to be drinking, what the hell's going on hyper when they go home? Yo. They're drinking before the game, they're drinking at the game, and then they drink, like, so you just putting, <laughs> like, and you're wondering why people fighting in the stands, going nuts, and all that. They don't shit. care, like, man. And it's they don't care. So, you, so don't tell me. So don't tell me about on campus how you got kids. Because let, let's just say, let's just say you got to the point where it's that legal where they even allowed you to smoke at the games. Right. You actually think that there'd be people going crazy and fighting. Matter of fact, they allowed you to smoke, they cut down the liquor. So that's another industry that's fighting this mm-hmm. shit. They mm-hmm. cut down the liquor. Because most people You got some smoking. of the liquor companies trying to get in it. Trying to get in it, yeah. You got the blood right. But I mean Again, they're, they're, look, bro, you're going, you're going to try, but we know, you know. Hey, all of them, I mean, all of them going to fail. But a lot of them going to exactly. fail because it's culturally, it's, it's not. It doesn't right. even mix. It doesn't even mix. You know what I mean? So I think that hopefully one day that we get to that point and, you know, it'd be, it'd be fun to see because it's like, it's evolving to a certain degree. I think that it takes, the, it takes our generation to one again, getting, getting to that. Um, that political standpoint, right? Yeah, and people gotta understand it's not just who you vote for fucking president. It's local, right. it's local. Who well, politics is happening every yeah. day. It's not yeah, just exactly. vote. You know, like okay, yeah. like all right, Trump was in office. I know plenty of people that took pictures with Trump that may have not supported him, but mm-hmm. they were in a business position. Yeah, and mm-hmm. what Trump was doing helped set them up properly. Yeah. Exactly. Or a business move. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that that's how it works. You just have no idea what politics is. All mm. the politicians are in bed with each other, right? Whether it's Republican Absolutely. or Democrat, they're the same people. Mm. As soon as they leave the stand, they go, ah, ha, ha, ha. Like, and they go eat with yeah. each other. Like, exactly. I grew up in Washington, D.C. Mm. Mm-hmm. I went to private school with all of these kids. Like, it's the yeah. same people. You know what right. I mean? They may mm. have one little difference. You know, one little stance, but at the end of the day, all these politicians are making a lot of money. And then guess what? When you get out of politics, if you scratch that one business owner back, who you go work for? Absolutely. Yeah. You got a job. You hear what I mean? Like, and then you're doing political work. Yeah. You're saying, hey, let me cover you. I'll go help you pass a Mm -hmm. bill. But we have to literally be there and get involved. Like, I've been a part of like three or four different political campaigns just in the last like four or five years on a small scale doing like marketing. Um, but when you see it, it's like, yo, like we aren't there at all. You know? Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's where these decisions are being made. Whether exactly. you get to smoke weed, whether weed is legal, wherever your jurisdiction is, exactly. if you aren't speaking up in that city, uh, at the state house, at the city house, they not paying attention. They don't hear you. Right. You know, yeah. Like right. even our, they murder somebody, and then we go protest at the state house on a Saturday. Nobody's there. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Politicians work Monday through Friday, nine right. to five. Right. Mm-hmm. So you need to go to their house. Yeah, exactly. You need to go to their. Na- if we're gonna protest, stop protesting at the state house. Yeah. Go to their communities. Go to where mm-hmm. they're most comfortable because at the end of the day, our cities are boarded up, but their communities are flourishing and moving perfectly fine. Yeah. Jimmy, mm-hmm. Sally, and Sue are doing whatever they want to do. The mm-hmm. whole time, our worlds are like complete opposite. Yeah. And we're in damsel distress and they live in it. And I, like, yeah. this is real time. And I'm like... Mm-hmm. We need to change our plan, you know, like how we attack, how we, or what we do or what, you know, because for me, I'm like, I've protested, right? I've seen some of them, I'm like, this ain't it. Yeah. But also yeah. I've played in front of a hundred thousand screaming white fans. 
Yeah. <laughs> Where you're like, hmm. But then white people are like, well, we don't get it. You know, we're just going to keep murdering that. And I'm like, this yeah. is not, <laughs> I'm not going to keep being your entertainment, right? I'm not going to keep exactly. allowing this to happen. Exactly. But we got black people like, oh, well, like even LeBron and him, I'm like, don't play. Mm-hmm. Don't play. Well, I mean, the Kaepernick thing is, is a big situation too, because it was like, y'all really going to let this happen. Y'all really going to let, allow this. And even now to this day, I remember I like, we lost when I watched the my, my, my Bills play last game. Um, How the Bills doing this year? What's the what's their no, record? Man, we don't know they're nine and three. Ooh. And we got Pittsburgh Sunday night. And you know Josh Allen's taking the listen, man. We we not playing with none of y'all out here. Just let y'all know. AFC I this if thing. If I do pick a team, I, I'm a I'm a Ravens fan. So if I okay, got yeah, team, I'm Ravens baby. Yeah, yeah they're doing that right this year too. But um. I was watch I was watching them and uh they talked about Kaepernick and they did a little special thing on I'm like it was like they were, you know, kind of bigging them up. Right. It was funny how things were where when he first started. Oh yeah. I mean, I remember even in Buffalo, this is the thing. Don't get it twisted. Buffalo is also a racist town. You know? All of these towns are racist though. That's what yeah. we I think we like. What? The whole no. country is racist. I mean, he 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 kneels, yeah, he <laughs> kneels, and they like screaming at this motherfucker, like right. get the fuck up, nigga. Like, right. yeah, right. And then fast, and then like you're the entertainment. How dare yes. you yeah. decide How dare, you're going to be political? Paid. Yeah, you're getting paid millions of dollars. How just shut up and play. Right. Your life is you're, terrible. Yeah, you're not. You don't go through that stuff. Yeah, you could. That's the fucked up part about you, damn right. And especially, and especially, especially for football players, people right. don't get that shit. Our face are covered the entire right. time. Nobody knows so, who you are. You nobody knows who the fuck you are. Yeah, especially if you're not a big player, if you're a receiver, a quarterback, right. small dude, small Stand safety, back. cornerback, DB, nickel, like even outside linebacker, even or even a DN. You don't know how big you are. And if you're an old lineman, you might just be big as hell for no reason. Right. So, so they ain't seen you unless unless you one of the main players. So, you know when he kneeled down and everything, and and and, and everybody was just going hard. And now to fast forward to what the knowledge is, it just to me it's just like it's still not there because like again, if this happened on a level like George Floyd, and it, and it happened during the season, let's say it should be like, oh, that's what's up. All right, ain't nobody playing Sunday. Exactly. Y'all can get mad all you want to, or or how about this? We gonna make you want to make a statement. We gonna warm up, get out there, and everybody's gonna walk off the field. Y'all gonna pull right. all you want. We ain't to. coming back. That's what I we want. I'm like, back. don't come out. You know. Yeah. And then if the fans, and on top of that, and the culture of it was, if the fans were like, yeah, you know, not only that, we're not even gonna, um, we're not even gonna like come to the game. We're not gonna support this team anymore. We're gonna stop doing this. Da 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 da. Watch how the owners all of a sudden shift that to because the, they're involved politically. They ain't just and get business a wise. Yeah, business wise. They ain't just get a oh, they ain't just buy a team because they got a hell of money. Everybody got billions, but dollars, but they were involved. Mm-hmm. Property owners, political owners, business owners, right. this, that, and the third. They got they get together like, all right, man, we got to, it takes that. It right. takes us also owners. Right. So when people say like we gotta own a team, we got cook, we got these people who go to all these people got money. Right. Yeah, you got money, but guess what? People don't get it. You still got to get it. You can get it. Say right now, for whatever reason, Bill Gates came to me and said, TJ Gutrell, I'm going to give you $5 billion. Right. Okay, cool. Now, I can just go and say, say uh, buy, buy, you know, people put the ruler already had. So let's say I go over the bills, like I got $3 billion. Right. Ruler, what's up? Yeah, team got to be you gonna be like, you go, he gonna be like, okay, what did you say it was up for sale? He'll be like, all right, and then I gotta get approved by all of the okay. owners. And they're gonna be like, well, why should we let you in? And then they know how and then they do a background check of what you are about. Right. Yeah. You think that they're gonna allow you, they're gonna they're gonna get another owner in there somehow, somewhere, and they might even do some background stuff, and then he comes by and says, Well, this owner is gonna pay us three point one. Mm-hmm. billion dollars and he was a more experienced owner. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why it's a battle that people don't understand. It's about money and it's also about the political aspect of the situation right. and involved in it. Right. 
But that's why the players, you know, it's like the players, man, we got to get the word out to these, like, this guy. I mean, even young kids, I mean, which schools you going to? Instead of going mm. to all these big schools, go to HBCU because that's where the money starts to go. Absolutely. Right? Like, Absolutely. Um, because we don't, I mean, nobody really tells you that. Yeah, you you yeah you go into OSU or these big schools because it's Nike or because it's the big school, but a lot of those black schools lost out on that money right because they didn't uh, invest in their sports. But now we're starting to see it where it's like, yo, like you got one good basketball player going to HBCU and it's going on crazy. It's going off. It's yeah. jumping. You yeah, know, but it's going on. Economy, now. right? We don't understand. I, we haven't equated the uh, the power of sports entertainment and economy, right? Mm-hmm. Like Ohio State, there is no professional team here because mm-hmm. Ohio State's football team alone is worth a billion dollars. You know? Right. So not only is it entertainment, but it's a tourist attraction for the entire state and city. Absolutely. So the city is making money off of Ohio State being what it is, mm-hmm. off of the football team, and then you don't have to pay the players. And then you got a new crop of players every year. And then you got crazy fanatic fans that are uneducated all over the little cities and towns in Columbus and, you know, little – like, as soon as you get five minutes outside, you're in the country, you know? Like, right, right, right. Right. You got all these little small towns that these are the people that are the raging fans – Mm-hmm. The whole time, that's money, that's economy, that's power. But then that money is not going back to these players' communities Absolutely. or in these players' pockets. So mm-hmm. then, literally, a player is at that height, and then you have to start over in life yeah, exactly. to make money to live to like when it's like, yo, you were the kid that you went to school with that is just there for engineering is nowhere close to where you are as an athlete in that realm, right? So right. me being a D1 athlete and a kid just being an engineer, we're not in the same level when I'm performing, I'm having interviews with ESPN, mm-hmm. I'm getting critiqued by everybody and their mama, yeah. uh, got my own life, and I still got classes. Yeah. But we filling up the stadium. Yeah. You know, yeah. we winning games, so the coach is getting contracts, extensions, Nike's mm-hmm. getting paid, media companies are making money because websites mm-hmm. are starting to sell ads. Absolutely. And we don't get paid. No, nothing. And, and that, that thing is just going continuously. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's just moving. And mm-hmm. it's like we haven't set up any systems, anything for – like every individual player needs to have a business. They're right. a business, right? They're, They're a business. business. Yeah. And they, like, the, like you, literally, you literally should have – I mean, especially when it comes to Ohio State, I mean – the Literally, players, Ohio the, State's the, football program is worth a the, billion I mean, the, the memorabilia – that is so you go out there and ball out and now I got sixty thousand people buying your jersey. A t shirt at a lanyard. Yeah. At at, you know, between forty, fifty to two hundred fifty dollars a pop. And you are meanwhile in your dorm room eating top ramen noodles on Thursday. Mm-hmm. That's how it got down. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, when an alumnus sees that, like any one of us that maybe been was in the league, they pull up to the squad, they see this dude like he balling out or whatever, and they hit him with a handshake. Right. It's like man, here go with whatever. You know what I'm saying? No wonder why there be there was, like there was corruption. No wonder why you know fast forward to what we know what the truth was. But some players were like, yeah, man, I know some players that don't turn around. They ain't go to class at all. Right. You know what I'm saying? They just somehow, some way had a, had a three all. I barely and, ever went to class. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I keep it 100, but the thing is, I knew the system because yeah, school is you get a syllabus, right? They tell you everything you need to know at the beginning of the semester. This is the class. This is when you need to turn in this homework assignment. This is when this project do. Unless they take an attendance, I don't need to be there. All I need to do is be there for projects to turn right. in, assignments for homework. Um, but if I'm not getting class participation points, I don't need to be there. I turn mm-hmm. in my homework. I'm there yeah. for the tests because it's a it's a it's a game. You can't it's sell it's everybody. It's a system. Yeah, exactly. It's a system. So how do we make sure thousands of kids aren't failing, but they exactly. always make it through? Right. Exactly. If everybody fails a test, what do they do? They curve the test. They curve the test exactly. 
So we do that for everything, you know. So yeah. I do like private school taught me. I had teachers helping me write papers. Right, right, right. So, but right. think about this: you think a CEO is writing his speeches or no. his thing? No, yeah, exactly. you got somebody yeah. sitting there like, "Yo, type this up for me." Like, all right, yeah. talk it. You gonna type it? Yeah. Uh, edit it, and we gonna put it out. Yeah. The team effort, but mm-hmm. we don't teach teamwork in school. School is very individualized. Absolutely. If you if you peak, you cheating, and then you're yeah. demonized, and it's like, yo, like, I had all the nerds helping me in private school. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, y'all gonna help me, mm-hmm. you know, but right. I was cool with them. I wasn't a jock. I wasn't like one of those yeah. dudes that was like, I'm gonna just use my. Like, I was like, nah, we gonna be homies. I know yeah. y'all are weird. Y'all smart though. You know? Yeah. Right. And, <laughs> right. You realize these are the guys that are gonna go be the millionaires because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. their parents is investing in them, like. My school, you could pay like an extra three to four or five thousand if your kid was like slow mm-hmm. and they've got extra time on their homework and projects and tests. So right. it's like, you know, you still get the same degree from this prestigious private school, but you received extra help. You got more time, mm-hmm. but you're not seen as a slow kid, you know. But in our communities, if you receive an extra time, it's like, oh, he's slow, he retarded, he, he's special. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh nah, the private school, nah, you need a little bit of help, they gonna give you help. All right. Literally, they created a pro they created a class called Algebra Three. Like, what mm. the fuck is Algebra Three? Mm. It's not real. Like, but they created it for a group of us. It was mm. a bunch of football, basketball players, some other kids from that program, and it was like a hybrid, mm. but that helped us get to that senior level class. And it's just manipulation. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's, it's, it's literally manipulation. But we are not in these positions where we're manipulating the system. Yeah. We're manipulating. Mm-hmm. We're controlling the strings, right? We Right, 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 we, right. We determine, like, the um, the payout, right? What's happening. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And that's where, you know, because, like, I'm saying, like, I'm in a lot of positions where I'm with people. And I'm like, well, it's cool. Like, I'm with some of the best white people, like, the smartest yeah. ones. And you're like, nobody in my community moves like y'all move. Right. But right. y'all not professional athletes. Yeah. Y'all not entertainers. Like, yeah. y'all just yeah. escape. Exactly. Y'all can just disappear. Right. Um, right. Y'all got multiple houses. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all use businesses in a different way, you know. Um, and so it's different things. Like, when, you, when it comes to cannabis, it's like, man, we need to be farmers yeah, again, right? You know, like we're afraid to be farmers because we are relating that to slavery. Yes, right. The difference between slavery though is you weren't getting like, paid. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. We we approach that to hardworking and and like no money. It's free and, labor and, and free labor, right? Like like literally hot summer out, and I think that we were we were in an escape to get out of that. When in essence, we should just got more land and got back to it now. They, oh, know, we they, did get yeah. land, but our land. Yeah, we did exactly, <laughs> exactly. So now, again, the awareness. Now we got the black farmers literally getting back to it. But I think that we need to all get back to it 100 percent because that is literally the sustainable. You know, there's nothing like farm raised vegetables, farm raised everything, medicine, farm raised herbs. Well, it's saving you, saving you, saving you so much money. I mean, even my knowledge of it increased. Where like, I started seeing how much. It was these these great vegetables that you can plant once right. you do have a little bit of plot property. And it doesn't make right. sense for people to you start thinking about it, go to the grocery store all the time and buy all this shit, or you really just plant it and be patient with it. And then right. these seed packs, these seed packs actually last you like ten years, and they're like an investment of like a hundred dollars. Man, we you should gotta understand how many understand how. I mean, I'm talking about like multiple. And I even like it blew my mind when I first saw it. So I was like, okay, there's no way that I'm gonna not be out here on the grind to get property where I can grow my cannabis and grow, you know, uh, all types of fruits and vegetables that I need right. to sustain, you know, the medicine and the health that I have. And, and now I think, play, I mean, a lot of players are getting farms. So I will say right. that, like, something, and even the rappers, you know, they're starting oh, yeah. to get farms. People are starting to, I mean, the information is like, disseminating. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we're getting going, and the awareness is spreading, and it's right. it's, 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 it's refreshing, man. It's refreshing because I, we both came up in that era and seen what it was like fully on a scale of like where it was just kind of like hitting on the camera. Now, 
I think that they can't stop it. I think that what they're doing on a level, which is what they're doing, these people, which is this white corporate situation where they, they can't stop it. So they're having these secret lineup situations where they're kind of probably putting their people in these top they positions before they allow it to say, okay, because if someone said, if they allow to say tomorrow, do it the right way, boom, then the awareness is always to the top and it would be a takeover by, you know, multiple, you know, people, but it would especially for blacks, who well, this is part of our culture, right. do it the right way. Right. It would say, it would, it would definitely, it could even save us in a, in a whole different matter. Right. They well, because they're not even mixing, like here in Ohio, it's medical, right? So yeah. like, you can't be out smoking it. Like everything has to be private. Yeah. But you think about cannabis and culture, cannabis exactly. and music, cannabis and sports, cannabis yeah. and everything. It's like, mm-hmm. well, it becomes like, all right, we need a bar where we can smoke and eat. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know exactly. I mean? Like have yeah, a good exactly. meal. Like, in a lounge, you know what I'm saying? Like a lounge yeah. area. And, that's, and again, community. there again. Like, yeah. you know, it's and a the, community thing. Like it's not right. a... Like just like you grow, you grow food, and usually you harvest with people. Right. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's definitely for... weed, like in their house, like nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you want to have, and again, like you know, where I'm at, you want to have, uh, be able to have parties and uh, right. You, you know, again, in Canada, you, there's there's you know, what part of, are you in Canada? What part of Canada? Yeah, I'm in I'm in London, Ontario. Okay. And so my um, boys from college is out uh, in Canada right now. I forget what part. Yeah, uh, my boy Issa. Yeah, he's Southwest, he's, Southwest. He's, 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 he's locked up too. Locked up yeah, freedom and freedom up, man. Like, yes, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, just keep it locked up all the time, all the time. Like, um, but no, how like, been, how long you been locked up? Because I see your man, uh, your Chargers picture. You got the baldy man. What yeah, you- I was baldy up, man. I just got locked up for the past like four years, man. Like I was dead, but I was like I said, I, I couldn't imagine wearing locks at that time, right? Or even having hair like that because of that helmet, right? I was like, nah, man. You'd shit. have had a whole another layer of protection, though. Whole other uh, layer. Not, not, I didn't even think about that shit, right? So, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, fuck. <laughs> like being in London, Ontario, we have these these cannabis events, right? And like, right. No, I mean, just in Ontario, not in London, but like. All through the GTA in Ontario, we were able to have from before even before legalization, you were able to have like you know specific little cannabis infused events that were. And now it's like if they really wanted to do it right, they should allow lounge. They should allow you know markets that are like you know too specific. But then that's not that's under that's under control or a rock. So, but who's running the programs? Exactly the one the people who are that's the thing when it went legal here, the people who run the programs are. The most corporate people you can ever imagine in your fucking life. That's why we got that don't even smoke. That don't even fucking smoke. Most of them they know nothing about it. But again, they've been put in position because they were already there. Exactly. I mean, I remember one time. I remember one time doing some research, and my boys were looking at getting the LP license, just license producer, um, license, right? Because some places, like in Ontario, they had like specific areas where you can win the day. They have a lottery of names. If you have to put a front, they give it to you, but whatever. Long well, story short, I found out that there was a meeting, and uh, to get to this meeting, to to get to these specific people, the ticket was twenty five thousand dollars a ticket. The application fee, the application, game, yeah, the application fee, everything is pay to play. Yeah, exactly. The application fee was another five hundred grand, and that, and you might not even get approved. Right. So they that's take that five hundred thousand dollars. It's just to get it. So then you can go take that 500000 and go to your facility and they'd be like, no, no, and it's not refundable. Yeah, yeah. So you might just, right there, you might, you lost a half a mil just so trying to play. But then you got to have, you got to think about it. Most people ain't putting up their own money. So you got to have a group no. of people that have Absolutely. that money that, and usually that group of people says, oh, I know somebody over mm-hmm. here that mm-hmm. can help us get us yeah. in the door. Because I, I be with them. I, I yeah. know. That's how Absolutely. the game go. Yeah. Period. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. But and that, that's so, that turns into money. That turns into yeah. jobs. That turns into economy. That turns into it's right. not black and white in terms of football. Like, yeah, like, like no. no it turns a, into profit and cash flow and jobs and financial like, freedom. Financial, financial freedom. freedom you financial know? freedom like, and, and self-sustained. More, more, more importantly, 
self-sustaining community. I mean, for people that are able to grow indoor and outdoor, that's the thing about a cannabis plant. It's not hard to grow indoor. It's not hard to grow outdoor when you do it right. Right. It would be more, it would save lives. You know what I'm saying? Especially, I mean, even having you know young mothers able to grow with CBD and be able to give their, their, their young children specific knowledge and give them freely cream. Yeah, moms taking CBD, yeah. helping them with their pain. Because mm-hmm. I mean, my wife, totally. just, we got two kids. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. man, and my wife afraid to do it. I'm like, if mm-hmm. you don't take some of this weed. Yeah, exactly. You have to. You yeah. know, at this point, it's it's necessary. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Like I said, I, I feel if I Churches, pray. you know, churches, yeah. right? You're going to mm-hmm. have cannabis churches, right? Because at the mm-hmm. end of the day, mm-hmm. that we got to, but that's a nonprofit. You can start, you might be able to start those now really as a nonprofit. Absolutely. And, and I think that once what will happen now with the, if you and did it immediately. Donations when you're giving out. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, if you did it immediately. The, the thing about Babylon is you did it immediately. Now they're going to answer paperwork. Right? Well, you're not allowed to know, smoke, that, right, whatever. But, if they did it the right way again, you should be able to freely have a cannabis church. You should have free cannabis meditation areas, free yeah. cannabis camps. Like they have in a specific space, but they're still somewhat regulated, right? So, um, yeah, but I think that in due time, we'll get to that, man. So, like I said, these platforms are, yeah, these platforms are perfect for it. You know what I'm saying? And we got to keep it going. I mean, can't say that having conversations like this. Uh, you know, I was on uh, you know my live yesterday, and I had a person from uh, Jamaica called I and I Genetics that hopped on, no. and he was like, uh, he was one of the, like top, the top growers in the world. He's from Jamaica, and just like again, because of these things, it just because it's small right? things, they're powerful. Like, and, and, and this just, last too. I mean, like this yeah. conversation I recorded, I put it up on YouTube. Yeah, now exactly. it's a course, man. Like people right. are able to, I mean, see this and watch this. Mm-hmm. and experience you know some of the things that we experience right our brain mm-hmm. right playing sports at a high level we deal with a lot but a lot mm-hmm. of times it's not processed in a way that we're talking about it long form long form like, right it may, it may be in a documentary of the best guy yeah but what about there's 53 other guys on that roster there's exactly. a lot of guys that played division one sports mm-hmm. that were very good and didn't pan out for the league but what yeah. happened yeah, exactly. You know, What's the story? What's the What's background the story, story behind that guy? What's what the choice that they now? make? Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, is he still successful now? Did he transition? Why mm-hmm. wasn't he able to transition? What yeah, was exactly. the setup? You know, because a lot of those things still come back to our foundation of mm-hmm. community. You know, mm-hmm. I'm successful because yeah, my parents are doing pretty well, so I'm inspired and motivated to always keep going. You know what I mean? I got good community. I got help. I got resources. But everybody doesn't have that. But you have guys that were superstar athletes that don't pan out. And then what happens? You know, they get into drugs. Yeah. They maybe were into just weed, but then it got even worse because they had an ailing back, Mm -hmm. but they didn't have good health insurance because they didn't have a corporate job. Right. They just been hustling. Yeah, all day. And they, they don't know that they don't have the tools. They don't have the knowledge also, or even the circle around them. Like it's all of those little to, circles. Yeah, man. all like, of those circles, too. Right? Like I know yeah. I come from a background where I've always had good insurance. I've mm-hmm. always had things to do. But when I think about, damn, I got teammates that I knew was coming from the gutter. Yeah, and yeah. They were dogs, not eating yeah. after games again. Um, but yeah. now we're adults. Like now we are grown men and the university really ain't doing nothing to help us. Absolutely. You know, and then I'm here being a businessman and I can do a lot of different things as a businessman, as opposed to if I was an NFL player. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like yeah, I'm, I'm, shit I'm getting into where I'm like, yo, this nigga's in the league. That's they can't, they can't, they can't even, they can't even touch it. what's going on. Yeah, they can't exactly. touch it. Um, and so by the time they do figure it out, I'm already in a different space where I've been yeah. moving this way, but I've been able to do that because of my experience, right? Absolutely. And the people I've been around. Um, but it's, it's that exposure of getting the stories out. Um, and I know a lot of us, we, we have ego, 
Um, but we also don't have the platform, you know, right. a lot of us aren't willing to do it ourselves. We don't know how to tell our own stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're afraid to, um, we've all, we, we, we know we're judged, but it's like, Hey, you know, p- people can't really judge you once you, they know who you really are. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Once you, Oh, he's not just an athlete. This man is a creative. Yeah. You know, this man yeah. is intellectual. He's educated. Yeah. You don't have to just have the degree from Harvard or Yale. No, no. Like I said, it's, it's in your it's in your presentation, your conversation. Like I said, yeah. the conversation when people open up. Like I remember the whole, you know, when they find out you play, right? Then nobody just one of those you know, up play football, do do do, right? And then they don't really understand. So then you you become quiet. And then like even when I'm around now, as soon as I speak. It, you are now you understand there's a whole different experience there's a whole different knowledge it's a whole different you know you know conversation you can tell you know that there's a whole work experience because mm-hmm. i played a little bit but i also worked my ass off in between those years that i didn't play and i've worked right. banks i worked for corporate i've worked mm-hmm. in the industry i've worked industrial i have management experience century management experience but if i get on say i have a vegan uh, uh, had a business that i helped start like all this shit what you doing now like right right now it's like Really, right now, I love the life, man. And um, basically, starting the roster fire movement as far as the BSRC. And um, also, you know, working for LP, the licensed producer, also a private okay. company. So, it, uh, called Sensi Brand. So, it's been um, definitely a blessing to, to have that situation, but mostly also focusing on, you know, the, obviously the BSRC, um, which is a, basically a grow community movement and a coalition. And both of okay. the Soldier Fire Coalition. Okay. And um, it's basically me and, yeah, me and basically my indigenous partners up here just really creating programs to run, get, like, these platforms out the cannabis, write knowledge about it. Right. And also um, make sure that, you know, there's also a, um, extortion going on with the plant mm-hmm. and how the money is also going on. So, you know, not having to make sure that I'm, you know, our grow is going to be you know, one of the best grows and and also a good situation to be affordable for the people. Right. Um, and then also there's the there's the whole group movement with that. But um we working working for this LP you know, up here in Ontario is able to just really focus on that and then obviously do the music, which is uh so I got, you know, Cotrizi has got you know, the Selassie Soldier album coming out. I've been doing music for a long time. Music and that's the thing it. about yeah, that's the thing about you know not playing. It wasn't like it was thing oh, I'm rapping around playing. Blah, blah, blah. I know I've, I've been my music was in my my mom was in the choir, I've been in the choir. I knew I was gonna put the music and out. And now they get mad at the guys that's playing and rapping. Exactly, they do, which is crazy to me because it's like you should be able to express um who you are in that time. And, and they and they don't and they don't get the point that like it's all entertainment, but then they try to take, they try to, well, the crazy thing is they try yeah. to make everything serious. Like, first of all, it's, yeah. entertainment, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. It's an art. It's, 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 yeah, it's an art form. It's an art. It's an so art form. Telling like, this man he can't rap and have Yeah, like, like, I guess, yeah. I guess, I guess would have been cool. I guess it would have been cool since it's art. You should go paint, right? right. Like, or some shit. Like, think about that, right? And to me, they don't understand that, like, they don't understand it. That keeps you from getting in trouble. Is having a good art form to release. Like a lot of cats that we play, but you know how it go, they just had a little small studio to cut and it was talented as hell, grabbing that shit, but they couldn't put out nothing because they're playing football and you know, you can't be talking and saying that shit about. So then, you know what I mean? Now that I'm obviously not in, the, in my own independent lane, I'm gonna put out, you know, music I'm gonna put out and talk about cannabis and talk about, you know, the things I'm talking about political and. Right. You know, well, that's the thing uh, about music, it allows you to put yeah. things out there. In a yeah, way, exactly. In, in a different vein, and just like this, our conversation, but rap and music is a different mm-hmm. channel that allows. You know, that's why I appreciate a lot of these rappers too that put good things in their music. You know, because mm-hmm. that message does get out there. You know, yeah, exactly. You know, a lot of people. Exactly. And and you know what? You know, we we can continue to have these platforms, and, and like these things are going to grow mm-hmm. on a major level. You know, like this, this thing's gonna explode. These conversations are gonna people are gonna watch these, they're gonna smoke and watch these things and, and right. understand and get it. And it's important to continue to have it. It's important even to me to for us to continue, even when we don't wanna, you know, we're kinda tired a little bit as far as like maybe our own independent program, but like you gotta continue because you you don't know who's watching. Right. Those three or four people that, that got that good knowledge from you, those seeds, just like we have in cannabis. Right. You know, those seeds multiply legit. Right. 
It's a, it's a, it's a major things in years down the line. That's the thing about cannabis. That's why they're still scared to fuck with it. When you get a plant, you get one good mother that multiplies into 50, 100, 200. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And it continues to just, you don't need, you don't need them with right. this thing. They right. know that. Right. You, you don't need it at all, you know? And you do it the right way. Has, the fact that the government has a patent. Yes. Like, yeah. You know, like, it, it's like, you know, so um, these 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 uh, conversations, um, you know, first of all, like I said, thank you for, like, again, you know, letting me, you know, on this platform. And, and yeah, so we're going to have you again. This is just the first time. Yeah, you know, exactly, gonna, man. Listen, I'm, I'm trying to find like, guys, too, that, you know, we can have consistent dialogue, whether yeah. it's uh, uh, current topics, whatever's happening, where we can Absolutely. Just, yeah, it's Absolutely. like sports, right? It's just like exactly. sports commentary, ESPN. We got to have this where we can... This is what's happening now. How can mm-hmm. we, what are we doing? What are you doing in, in Canada? Oh. What's happening in Canada? What can we do? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we, we can you, have Yeah, we can have that 100%. Like I said, you're right, because we we need it more consistent. It can't just be like once every year. Yeah, know. we have these we, one-off. We gotta, yeah, we got to have these things, you know, current for and especially. It, and you're rare, current. right? You're a unicorn. Right, you uh, yeah, are. You're that, an anomaly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I that. know I'm an anomaly, right? Because yeah, I have yeah. two parents. You know, I have successful college-educated parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had the experience of you know college and private school and NFL. So you have these different experiences. So yeah. what I realize is a lot of times if I'm not sharing information, mm-hmm. nobody in my circle is receiving any. Is receiving it, yeah. Nobody really knows. Nourishing, it's- right. Yeah, we, we, it's all man. Is there talk about it? We'll yeah, know. Because, we'll know the music. We'll know. Yeah. We'll know the athlete who's doing X, Y, and mm-hmm. Z. We'll know the fashion brand. Yeah, but we're not getting this message or mm-hmm. the, the depth of the conversation right. behind the scenes of what these NFL players are really dealing with, what they contracts yeah. really like. Why do we see them and then they disappear, but then nobody cares about them? Nobody like, cares about them anymore. Like we right. just discard them. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's and then some cool. of them, and and to keep it to keep it a hundred, some of them left and then started their own like because right. they wanted to get involved in the cannabis. Right. They probably could have paid played. I'm sorry, five more years. You know, seven more years. Yeah. They're like you know, I got I just stacked up fifteen now. I'm getting the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm good. Like I'm good. I'm gonna go this. I'm gonna I'm gonna put two million to this good business. I know it's gonna be straight. Like right. I I cannot now. I'm a free I'm a man. Work. I'm still healthy. I'm a, I, yeah, I'm still healthy as fuck. I'm a free man. I can smoke as much as I want. So I'm gonna move to. A, I'm gonna move to Canada or whatever legal state. Bye, you man. know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 you know what? That seems like I know I know some players that that are now probably like waiting for that. Like they good. Like right now they probably chase some greatness, but. One, a couple more injuries may be away. Right. Maybe I'd be like, yo, I'm good. Bro. Right. I got family. I got 20 million. I guess I just signed this good and deal. I just, and people don't understand. It's not just the NFL contract. They got some endorsement deals. They got some, they yeah, got some companies crazy. now. And they got some companies now that are, are somewhat cannabis friendly on the back end. Mm-hmm. So they can still have, like, Nike is kind of still cannabis somewhat. People don't get that. It's kind of cannabis. They don't say yet, no. They don't say yes. Mm-hmm. So they got some people. But they who yeah, they, they got some people that'll still be endorsed be able to like you can, they're not gonna be mad if you got a Nike in them you smoke me and you promote that. You know what I mean? Them, I know play. I know some of them um like uh like snowboarders and yeah, snowboarders, yo, absolutely they all have like C B D brand, but you they be branded up like Yeah, all right? over they, and it's they smart. They have a Nike, you know, but yeah, yeah, they so, be a bunch of white boys, right? They do exactly they exactly watch. and nobody sees that. And if it was us, they gonna see that. Well right? again, we don't again, those guys have, the thing yeah. is, they're individual entities. Absolutely. So absolutely. Sean White is a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sean White is making the decisions. Get, oh, Nike, Absolutely. you don't want to be on Sean White? Well, that's right. fine. We will go and be this. Exactly. Exactly. We're yeah. not, we not losing no sleep, no nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get Sprint. We're going to get this. We're going to get <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, get yeah. So some money. NASCAR. Money NASCAR yeah. Same mm-hmm. thing. Those are individual entities. Right, right. The thing about football is we are 
owns. We are yeah. the players. We are one of fifty three. One of fifty three. Guess what? Oh, you need 11, a, we got a replacement for you. We got somebody. And, and it busts it down. You. Yeah, and then they like, bust it down. People don't get it. Like you fifty three, and then you eleven on eleven, so then you twenty two on the field. So and then you know, get and then and out of that one or two or three that make a play here and there that score a touchdown probably you right. know because you know where you are you know as a safety you might be doing some shit but you might make two tackles but right. you was playing your ass off right. you all you on the other coverage. side <laughs> yeah you doing coverage you locking down that whole side they don't know that they can't pass the ball over there because you're doing your thing all right so little things and then you leave the game and you go to the store and nobody's saying yo great game because they don't even you know the owners might know. And you're not and getting that endorsement money. And then you ain't getting that endorsement money, so they play on to that and pay you cheap, even though you're you not might getting your pictures. A, you ain't you getting the saying? celebrations. So, yeah. So again, it's 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 good that we have these conversations, get this and get this get this knowledge out, you know, so yeah, people can sure. understand the back end of this, man. I mean, like I said, we're I, deeper, I man. We're 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 much more dynamic. Yeah. Uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's because that's what's being sold is that we can only do we one trick ponies. But what I realized, we just got to create platforms. We have to. And a lot of times as athletes, I realize that there is a niche where there is that app, there is that superstar athlete. But then there's like the D1, D1, D2, D3 uh, guy yeah. that played UFL, AFL, Canadian football. Right. So, like we're all athletes at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? But these yeah. stories are the ones that don't make it because it's not the flashy exactly you know exactly. Like the heat of the moment yeah yeah but, yeah you know we're building longevity we're building mm-hmm. like oh this is a two-hour conversation three-hour conversation mm-hmm. and somebody's gonna be able to watch this play it back and be like yo these and then go and look up you look you up yeah yeah and see the stories and see it you, you know, know and see you and the same thing to you and like it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be great man so like that's said, why it's, that's it's, what my whole idea behind it. You my yeah. first guy that I really kind of uh, reached out to on this. Uh-huh. Uh, I've just been super busy, but uh, yeah, uh-huh. I want to do it more for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, it's, I remember when I first saw it, I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, what if, cause what if, you know what I'm saying? It made sense. Like, right. <laughs> Cause I was, it was almost like I wanted to do it. Cause I'm like waiting right. for somebody. I'm like, and then you get that. You know how you get that light, like, yeah. you know. And your voice is like, well, if you're waiting for somebody, maybe you do it yourself. Right. Do it yourself. And then, yeah. And so when I saw it, I said yes. And then now, of course, the, the host and the knowledge, and I said, yeah, you know, we got to talk about the yeah. and stuff. And you, again, yeah, we can continue to have these conversations over. We can connect. I'm gonna, you know, can use my platform for you also. Yeah. Make you if you got any, send it over. I'll yeah, so I'm saying, it. yeah, same thing with you, vice versa, man. Yeah. And again, it's, it's perfect. It, it, it's legit. The to my saying right now, bro. It's perfect. We can connect. We have these Zoom conversations. Have a couple of more people on here that are that okay. are talking about this. And then, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get yeah. an athlete panel where we'll have. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a guy which you need too. I call him Worldwide Hugh, which is one of the one of the black like ambassadors for black cannabis, oh, like black, black cannabis growers. Yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's my, he's my, he's my big, one of my big homies. Like, we okay. have, like he's a person that he's in the left, right hand of everything from South Africa up. And the fact that I can call him right yeah. now on WhatsApp, he can right. up King and have a, I mean, he could do get paid to conversate for a guy. He want him to do right. like, you pay him for a conversation. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And he would love, he would love this platform. He would love nothing more to talk about what we need to, I mean, it'd be perfect. This guy was right next to Al Harrington. Al Harrington actually learned from this guy. Okay. Like, Al Harrington talked about him on uh, The Breakfast Club. And had, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. Right. And um, the connection, and he, right he had, yeah, connection. So we gonna have, we gonna definitely build this right on a level. And I think that you know this is perfect timing, also. So I, like I said, man, let me know and anything. I'm right there. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Real talk, bro. That all day. That. Man. I appreciate yeah. you, bro. I'm gonna definitely yeah, put this up probably on YouTube. Uh, okay. And I shoot it out to you, and then you know we'll. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Put it up, and I'll even put it up on the you shoot it out. And then I go, oh, I have a channel too. I put it up on my channel also. You know what I'm saying? Oh, cool. And then I put it on whatever and get the word. I got a lot of players, a lot of people that'll love to see this. It's, it, was, it was a great thing, great conversation. Like, hey, look up at the clock. I was like, yo, yo, we were talking for two and a half, almost two and a half hours. And I know for a fact that if I, we could talk, 
you know, about oh, we can this. keep going. We can keep, we going. keep going. Yeah, people, we, we can go for the, like whatever. But you know, but now that's what I mean. I kind of wanted to be just free, kind of. We just go. Yeah, it was perfect. It was perfect, man. Trying to get like, a background, had... you know, who who we yeah. are, like who you are, like um, you know, because I think that's important too. The story, you know, who you, who are mm-hmm. you? Like, how do you I think? Yeah, I appreciate that. I thank you very much. Like I said, it was you know great to refresh and they get it out, you know, and talk about it on a platform. Too, right? it's kind of yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like Maybe straight up. I mean, like I said, we got so many subjects right. to talk about. I mean, even I'll talk about, talk about the now. music next time. I want to talk about, I want to hear the music. Yeah, we talk about the music next time. And then we can even talk about what the athletes are getting. I mean, I don't know if you hear about like, like psilocybin. I think I've been that, about it. Yeah, I, I no think more. that, yeah, I think that there's a small knowledge that's going to get out there. It's going to allow people to say, yeah, dog. I think that on a small dosage scale, right? Instead well, of us, taking... so many people are dealing with depression. Yeah, the anxiety, and that's the thing. Yeah, and and and, and we, we talk need about to that. unlock. You know, I, I mean, when you think about the brain and you think about the human mm. body, it's it's regenerative, regenerative. Yes, yeah, naturally. But that's if you are having something that's stopping you, God has put everything on this planet for yeah. us to heal. Yeah. In a and, and I remember that. And I remember like one of the biggest things is that the repair as far as athletes is being on the top pinnacle right. and then boom, it's all over overnight. People don't get that is PTSD too. You just, you are just sitting there with a hundred thousand people, you know, all of a sudden you walk down the street what? and nobody, Girl, and like you're, you're everybody. not in the club. Like people don't get, you're not walking in the clubs first no more. You ain't getting, like all this is, dude, you do the hat For free no more. You don't get Yeah, it. so you just in the crib, like, and I think that when, like, like me, I've, I've, I've got, like right now, I have to listen to this, like, it's perfect. I go to a point where you need that energy where even like you have those, and you even talk more, you relax, you get it out. Gotcha. And then the next day, the thing about it is, is the research the next day, it's almost like you recharge something yeah. in your yeah. head. And yeah. I think that in football, they're going to understand it. Athletes especially, they're going to understand that that is like almost something where maybe, you know, during a time of training, when you be set and you come back Monday mm-hmm. ready to go. I don't, think, I, don't, I, mean, I don't think about something like during the game and not at all. Like that, it's not a game thing. I think yeah. it's more in a again, a recovery situation where you might have a 48 hour time right? and you might have a horrible get the bill. Uh, the bills just lost. They lost the 99 free right? But we should be 10 and two because DeAndre Hopkins caught a hell goddamn Mary. Okay. <laughs> and I remember like, you know what it is? Like you just had that point and you lost. Right. But something freaked like, and you go home and you, and what do you do? You pick up the damn bottle. Because you can't smoke, mm-hmm. right? And then maybe even there's players that maybe like maybe got hurt, right. bad, right. and they made me in maybe a, a some small, you know, micro dose of psilocybin the next day to kind of just get into a floaty air and it gets you to that because it gets you to that right mind of like you know what this is what I'm going to focus on I can get this right, right? So we can talk about that, man. Okay. We can talk about so many things. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is an educational platform. You know what yeah, I mean? so we entertainment, yeah. education. We want to learn it all. We want to get it from the source. Man, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. I love it, man. I cannot wait. And like I said, it's it's. it's I will always. You know, we get we get, we get the pro guys. I got some other guys that want to talk. You know, and that's the thing. Once I started, it, dudes was reaching out to me like, "Yo, I want to yeah. talk." Yeah, because they want to get it out. Yeah, you know, the real want to get it out. And we yeah. should. We we are allowed to. You uh-huh. know what I mean? And Absolutely. We, that's the thing. We haven't we haven't had anybody create a platform that we've had that freedom to right. you know, express ourselves. I feel like right. Okay. Um, and so that's what I've realized. I'm like, yeah, there's no space for us really. So you just got to kind of create it, and this digital space will allow us yeah. to do that. I mean, even even like Stephen Jackson, Stack Five, like he. he he, remember, he was like saying that shit. He was like, yeah, he, he kept pounding it. He was right. I'm like, yo, you so right. He's like, yo, we need to create our own platform. That's it. We are the creator. Create our own platform. He's like, what's wrong with you creating your own platform? Do that what you do. Athletes and cannabis. Boom, lock down the website. Not about. Gives awareness out. This takes nothing, bro. Nothing, this takes, uh, I have I have a nice tripod with the light. We have a combo yeah. smoke. Boom, getting the knowledge out. Right. There's oh. no big production back we here. Just, we you know just met. We just met. And now we know what it is. Now we're building something that's going to be. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is going to be serious. You're going to oh, be yeah. like, you're going to remember this. You're going to remember this. You're going to be like, yo, remember this first one? 
First one. And then, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? First and then one. when that distorts and things open up, the borders open up and shit. So don't worry, man. We're going to get a profit, man. Yes, so, sir. Well, all right. Man, I'm going to let you man. off here, man. I yeah, appreciate. man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, dog. Anytime, let me know, man. Yep. Love. Yeah, Peace. Look, love. Look, love. Look. Chop a trap.